You can leave it up, I don't care. I'll probably just despawn it. Okay. It will go down quite quickly since there is a decent amount of structure, but a la large amount of it was just despawning the turrets. Alright, um... But I'll probably just be somewhere in the back if you make the tu if you make the turret well too high, I'll just and it. I'll use okay. the... It use the time quickly, to there's... again come up with the new oh, turret. The... Decent amount of structure, but a large, large amount of it was just despawning the turrets. Since right, um, the twin is a bit too big, probably. Mine. Anywho. <laughs> oh, shoot. I need to go grab my phone real quick. I'll what? be right back. Uh, uh, glad to see that even though you gave me the startup, we are still as disorganized as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's just part of the course, isn't it? I, I, I think I think my streaming is cursed, honestly. So uh, yeah. All right, my bad. Sorry about that. I'll be yeah, I was just saying that my streaming is cursed because um, you may have given me the startup, but we are still disorganized. <laughs> again, so. Could very well be the case. It's the curse of my streams, I tell you. Uh, also, hello Tux and Hazardan, welcome to my stream. What's up, guys? Yep, well, Hazardan literally said that. He said, what was up, guys? <laughs> and what's up is that apparently my stream is, uh, once again, not working on text overlay, so give me a sec to get that sorted out. Yeah, we're in no rush. Do what you gotta do. Do I need to redo it again? Um... Lord, I hope not. Finally. I'm just going to use my little platform again. Uh, um, let's see. Okay, right, so it's, I just, for some reason, it defaulted behind from the depths, I think, even though it's not in that position in the order, so. <laughs> yep, text overlay is now working for the chat on my stream. So, who's been spawning what now? Uh, I think Mady was spawning in some stuff. Uh, he's got like a... Um... Oh. That's a platform over here. Yeah, she's got a platform over here in the distance. They're just far enough away to not really start with anything. Okay, fair enough. And for now, I'll be probably taking a look at if I can make the 8 meter turret work. I think I can. No guarantees though, since even though it's twin, there may be some cooling problems going that small. Okay, um... Shall we actually do our proper stream intros now? I mean, we're about five minutes in, that's when we... Sure, why go. not? So... <laughs> um, hello everyone, this is I'm Mark 3 Um... Coming at you with another multiplayer build as my stream starts lagging to heck. I think tabbing out and opening a new tab on Chrome was a bad idea, so I'll, I'll stop doing that now. And today we are doing a multiplayer build, just some casual thing with um, Damodoc is the crew chief this time around. Matey doing something. And building the guns. Well, Matey's doing gun work and also playing World of Warships in the background, and I am. I'll wind up doing whatever my overalls tell me to do, honestly. So. <laughs> but that's the general plan for this one now. I'm just trying to come up with a uh, armor scheme for the hull here. Um, Ion, uh, how about uh, you, how about you uh, give me your thoughts on what I got over here? Well, I've been trying to think about armor because, well, shields. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect in every way in the uh, new version, which makes me actually not bothered with using them. So you know, I don't think a lot of people like it, but um, not enough people seem to be talking about it to change it. So, hmm. well, the old, the old shields were absolutely worth using. Yeah. But, um, the new new ones, I'm just like, I, I can't rely on them at all. What, no, did you have them like on max that. strength in your uh, small fries let's play when uh, you came across the? Those ships that were tearing it apart. Um, they were they were n not at max strength, but they were pretty high, mm. and they still kind of 
Failed. They because chewed right stuff. through you. It was, it was painful to watch. Yeah, because um, honestly, that kind of armor shield configuration has worked well before the shield change. Mm -hmm. After shield change, it was just far too weak because it, there was far more onus on the armor. Uh, yeah. Fact, the armor was thicker than I usually used to build, and it still failed. So. Anyway, um, yeah, Hazen is saying build minion build. <laughs> I will get to the building. They haven't given me build orders yet. Damn it! I'll I'll just be taking apart a bit of the hull just to present my idea of how to. No, go for it. I'm I'm curious to see what you come up. I want to see what you come up with. My idea is probably to extend the torpedo belt a bit, just to uh -huh. get that little bit extra survival out of it plus this means that you if you actually decide to use propellers on the bottom you want you can pull them in to reduce drag and still have the citadel it seems very similar to what we were doing with that dreadnought yeah this is probably one of my favorite ways to do it mm, okay just due to the fact due to the fact that it presents Almost no opportunities for accidental explosive disassembly. Right. When, when torpedoes, it's just because you have a... Because even though they should not, torpedoes have a nasty habit of doing whatever they want. And that's something you'll learn. But looking at build now, I'd recommend increasing the barbed size by two so that means just getting the hull a bit taller and working on top of that what do you mean the the, the barbet size because these were planned for the six meter guns weren't they and yes. i will make the eight meter guns if possible uh, question, is this going to be the thickness of the hole the entire way along? Uh, I I kind of uh, was wanting to build like a uh, smaller, more compact version of uh, my battle cruisers. That was the original plan. No, uh, I, mean, I mean, like, is the main length of the ship going to be this with this armor? Uh, it's probably going to... I would like to keep it as narrow as I can to try to uh, keep a block count down and try to reduce the volume, so... Does that answer your question at all? I'm trying to. Honestly, I'm trying to. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I was just wanting to ask before I did this thing. It's up in the air. So get a prefab of the armor. It, it's up in the air right now. So I I modified it a bit more to reduce the overhanging heavy armor, just to keep this thing a little bit low on the weight and costs when you need to. Yeah. yeah um, so, my, my so um, as we do the armor, we do it on this little bit of that spawned on the front of it, then we can just grab a prefab of that to run along the entire length. Hmm. Um, okay. Maybe uh, you put these wood slopes in here, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. A little bit better because they also provide the air gap you need. Okay. So, just from an armor standpoint, science, um, I believe this is a better choice. Now, let me check how high the new turrets will be. Since I have the Skyfire, and, which is one of the ca cannon patterns. Um, I'm wondering why there's so much stone down here in the uh, armor sites. Um, Torpedo protection plus yes. since it's backed by heavy armor, it will provide. Better protection than most metal. Okay. Basically, so to give it explosion kind of resistance, on. Ion. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm we could move. I was thinking of moving the. So I'll place the bottom or top turret. Depends on where you want which one. So just. As a measurement of where the deck armor will be, probably. So that's something to work with, to work on with the outline. Ion. 
Um, this is for just the hull, actually. Yeah, this is just, uh, we're just trying to get an armor scheme done, I, mean, I think. Are we, are we installing that as the actual thing? Uh, I'm just, uh, I just have it for comparison, since that means you will have easier time doing the hull work. I'll work if you need the way. No, this is just like the side armor I'm going to be working on. The actual upper yeah. armor is going to be worked on separately from this, I think. I'm, I'm just wanting to do it more easily so we can actually get the actual length and the um, all the side armor installed in one go. For now, I'd remove anything above the torpedo belt because that will probably be something to be done later. But with the bottom, that that is a lot of metal. I don't know if it, if that's a good idea. Uh, how so? Since you... Because... This will... Push... The mass... Quite high up and... Don't you mean lower down? No, no the total mass of the vehicle. Oh, total mass. Uh, so, the total... I would I'm actually just, well, say I'm that... Just, I mean, this isn't finalized, it's just like... Yeah, we're, we're just kind of spitballing here. Long. Yeah. This thing so will have more... If you do that, this thing will have more bottom armor than side armor, and I don't think that's necessary. So, well, probably... That, that, that's, just, um, that, that's just double bit, because I was thinking you might want a more reinforced mount for the actual turrets. For the entire length, I was going to do, like, one thick at most. Whoops, not stone. Like that, because uh, it wouldn't be as important. So it, it depends on what's, uh, what's in the central bit here. If we thicken this you, up with you don't a, a double form. really need a more reinforced turret mounting, apart from just pulling a heavy armor beam down the turret length. Okay. Um, I'll grab because that. Because you need. Yeah. So basically, use a, a beam of uh, heavy armor going from front to back as a keel, kind of as a starting point for the turrets. Yeah, as the attachment point, since the heavy armor is the most likely to survive, and even if the turret gets damaged, half of it will still be operational, probably. Mm -hmm. That's usually how I attach my turrets, just to give them that extra security of not getting blown out through the bottom. Okay. Okay. Then have one layer, one more layer below it, and that's probably fine for most users. If you're going with the submarine heavy campaign, that may be something to consider. But... I was thinking... Um... Those metal beams that were just installed there, like maybe instead of those, have two rows of uh, resource canisters along the side just for some storage room. You could actually do that, in yeah. which case I would just remove the complete bottom layer, as you can see. Which and bottom layer? The complete bottom layer. I, I was thinking like that. Hmm. So, just to complete the armor scheme, this is what my idea was okay. to do it. Okay. Um, hello, Clint and Josh. Hey, Existence. Ben and Jaxia. All of you, welcome to the stream. I just had Existence join mine. Have you put your Discord links up, Dammit? Yes, I did. Okay, excellent. Just double checking because you used to forget that. I've been You've trying been much to. About it lately. Thank you. I was about to say, I've been trying to do better about that. Actually, uh, do you mind if I take out the third metal row just here? Next to where these resource boxes are, because I've had another thought. Okay. Like, is that okay? That won't weaken the armor too much. I don't th think, think so. I is... usually go with like a uh, a double layer uh, whole bottom. So what I'm thinking is, move the resources boxes back one, and then add repair bots. So by default, the armor will have um, a rack of repair bots built into it. I don't know if I'd need that many repair bots as a thing. Well, swap out two of them for some resource boxes in the middle of it. You don't necessarily even have to do that. I would I would be for having that section empty and just have it modular, so you get your thruster somewhere. Then in another section you have you have the resources. Then maybe in another section some repair bots. Hmm. Yeah, again, we are just spitballing because um, remember this thing is like meant to be copy pasted to uh, build the, most of the length of the hull, so we don't have to mess with the armor um, that much. Yeah. So I'm just trying to work out what could be useful to put into it. What about batteries? Um, 
could do. I mean, I did install that stone insulation all around the, the underside. Yeah, I so. think that could potentially be a good uh, space to put in batteries because they would have EMP protection built in from the stone. Oh, well, yeah, from well, from and it would add weight to the bottom of the ship. So you, I would actually say that's a good place for a utility section. Then just have some batteries, well, some so just leave it storage. Hard on the side later. Yeah, and then just fill it out as we build the ship. Okay. So I've done the I've done the top armor and something on the sides for now. Uh, Existed says just out. add sixty nine layers of rubber and call it done. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack Steer, this is a ship, not a submarine. Not yet. Well, any ship is one um, design choice away from becoming a submarine, so you know. Or a torpedo. That too. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, matey. I was just splitting it off because this is, after all, not of course. not finalized yet, and I could see you were. You'd extend it into the actual thing. Itself. I actually like the shape that he's going for here. I think it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, I was I was going to suggest we had metal on the outer layer because alloy on the outer layer is very easily damaged. So I don't like <coughs> actually having an alloy outer layer. In in which case, I may have a good idea of what to do, but then again, my ideas usually turn out turn out for the worse in these cases because. As you may have guessed, I'm a massive ship nerd, and thus I know how most of it should look to make it vaguely realistic, and this is based on US battleship design. Yay! So, how do you plan on doing the barbette for the turret here? Uh, I I think you might need a little more room for that, won't you? <coughs> if, Excuse I, me. I was planning on having one heavy, one heavy armor deck, and then just side armor since this thing doesn't need that much protection with the ejectoring and such. Do you think and that's you any get... use? I've just narrowed the um, heavy armor stone layer so that the EMP protection goes all the way up the side. Yeah, that, that, it does good. make a bit of a Faraday cage, yeah. Yeah, but I, I was almost thinking of completely removing the top heavy armor since except for the sections around turrets you won't really need it and just add massive amounts of weight to the top huh. plus cost um, so also, I was um, actually thinking... I do have a first question okay um, matey's building the deck up along here um, was the plan to have some of these guns flush with the deck or was it actually going to be on a superstructure um, the they're going to be super firing guns, if that's what you're asking. So probably the first uh, set would be like... flush with the deck, and then the guns up above it, it would probably be... Uh... So the first ones would be flush with the deck? Yes. Okay. Right, that's what I was trying to ask then. Sorry, please go ahead, Macy. Yeah, or you can just pull, pull them on up on that topic. Just have another layer of deck armor with metal jutting out. But my idea for this, as you can see, I've been... I've been working a bit on the design and it's to provide a little bit more protection to the overall side while reducing cost and weight because you won't have the citadel extending up to the deck because that's just asking for a massive HE shell to go through yeah that's kind of why I had the um, the top of the barbette made out of heavy armor because I've had issues with uh, plunging fire going into the turret and wrecking it I was thinking having heavy armor on the turret side, so if this was the turret, I would just exchange the inner metal on the belt to provide, frankly, insane levels of protection, and then just this this deck, then have the barbette placed under it. Mm -hmm. Just how you have it on the rest of the ship, but have the actual turret a bit higher up. As you can see, since the guns will be bigger, or at least a bit taller, not necessarily thicker, but do we want to buy do we have a layer. do we plan on doing any type of barbette here? Because it would feel more comfortable if it did. So then that way we could uh, avoid some heat damage. Definitely, there is enough space for the barbettes, and I don't see why we couldn't. Because I'm just thinking of something. I don't know if it'd be made out of metal, just something simple like. 
like what I'm doing right here. In that case, you could even have more have the armor pulled a bit in, but I wouldn't do it because like this, you can fit two five by five engines mm -hmm. in better mode. I so this would be the citadel. Is it still going to be able to turn mode. like that though? It, um. Yeah, it will. It will. Okay. That's why I, I didn't go two layers like that. Because I was concerned about it still being able to turn afterwards. You can do that. You can do this with up to 11 by 11 turrets. 13 by 13s need a bit more space. So, okay. which area are you working on now? Because I feel like the discussion has left me behind. <laughs> uh, Anyways, we're we're discussing. For a bit. We're, we're so... just discussing a bar bet, that's all. Yeah. And I've forgotten actually what that word means, so um, um, could you explain that for me? Turret fitting. Ah, gotcha. I'll be right yeah. back. I'm so... Brain dirt. Yeah. Um, so, my suggestion of um, getting the heavy armor extending upwards towards with the deck is rejected then. I saw someone changed it back. Uh, the heavy armor extending up towards the deck, could you... Uh... He heavy armor and stone. Mm -hmm. um, up at the top here. I mean, someone has gone with extending the stone up, but they took out the heavy armor layer I, I installed where the wood is. Um, I would be fine with extending uh, the uh, heavy armor up towards the top, actually. So. Yeah, I mean, um, it's just like I didn't want that to be a, that top corner to be a weak point because that's, mm -hmm. that's the angle that most incoming shells will be hitting at. So that's why I swapped out some wood up there for the heavy armor and had the stone be the EMP resist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, let's be honest, a couple of heavy armor beams isn't going to add that much to the cost, I don't think. I think the issue that, uh, the only issue that I would have with that is, <clears throat> sorry, I, I got, I got some cotton mouth going on here, um, <laughs> is, uh, Hesh. But if we put on a wood spall liner, that should be able to counteract that just fine, so... Oh yeah, that's the point, Hash. Um, so that would that'd mean like... Hip. Yeah, bringing in like one. No, that, that's going up to the deck, so... Yeah, at least like uh, two meters of uh, deck armor. Something yeah, so like that, that would work. Because I wanted that heavy armor layer included, since heavy armor was included in the rest of it. Yeah. That's what I was thinking there. I think that'll work. Okay, so that's the side armor. What about up, upper deck armor? Um, we're going with, like, this area being solid then, I suppose? Um, let me try something real quick, just something I want to see. Okay. I'm. It's not that I'm doubting Mady. I just want to see for myself if that turret will still turn. Yeah, it's uh, it's usually when building um, the barbette. You said it was. Yes. It's normally corner pieces that um, stick on it. Yeah. It's I don't do that. Like that. <laughs> I I don't do that. I I yeah. Um, existence says submersible battleships. I think I've seen robots do that once. Hmm. Once or twice. Oh, it depends on, depends on the build, doesn't it? That is true. Uh, yeah, I... Ian, if you could, like, get us a slice of the, uh... That hole right there, uh, I think we can work off of that, and I'll just, uh... De yeah, I'm, I'm just asking because of this, this gap at the top underneath the side decks. Um, and you said I'm not quite sure... Decks what to do with that just yet, if I'm to be honest. Okay, we can, we, we can do a prefab of that later, so how long is this meant to be? And would it be better to start a new ship just so we can get all this stuff? Yeah, I think it might be best to start a new ship. I uh, just, uh, just wanted to be sure that we had a prefab of that grab Give before... Give me a second. Yeah, no rush. <laughs> just whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah, I have a full cap of that. Um, you might as well keep that there and just start a new ship rather than delete it. Okay. We, um, well, will we be wanting to prefab the actual barbettes off that? Oh, actually, that's work to come on later anyway, so... I don't know. 
Right, how long is the ship meant to be? I have no idea yet. Um, it would probably... You think maybe... 150 meters, maybe? 150 meters? Um... Alright. Let's see. I'm gonna grab another, um... Oh, you, did, you already did. Never mind. I'll just stay out of your way, then. <laughs> yeah, I already grabbed another dock. Um, if you'd be so kind as to grab the new vehicle that's just appeared. Absolutely. And it seems I forgot to do the azimuth, so would you mind changing that as well, please? Thank you. Why is there a chair in there? Um, I put that there for a reason, so I could turn the uh, turret. Oh, right, okay. Remember I was testing it out to make sure that uh, it would actually turn inside there? Yeah, I got you. But yeah, that, that's the free fire of the whole armor that we All right. settled on. That, yeah, that should do the trick, I think. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, pre if we got that uh, prefab, we could probably go ahead and start extending it. I uh, just want to make a quick change here. Uh, what are you changing? Um, the uh, the wood on the inside. I'm just going to, at the top there. I'm going to just change that to three meter slopes. I'm thinking though on the top, uh, probably lightweight alloy would probably be the best thing. Something like what I'm doing right now. What do you think? Um, yeah, it gives it some extra resistance to it. So you mean like all the way out like that? Yeah. It would go all the way to the uh, barbette. Apparently we built the wrong wood piece in there, but just fix that now. Uh-oh. Um, um, yeah, I, I made a mistake. I had the uh, mirror line in the wrong place. No big deal. Um... Oh, oh, I see what you did. Yeah. <laughs> no biggie, we can fix this. Fixed. <laughs> On that side, at least. Um, so you wanted like three wood and then one metal along the sides like that? Uh, actually, I wanted the barbette to be completely metal. Oh, uh, okay, so that was another symptom of the uh, yeah. misplaced thing. Right up. So I'm thinking something like that. Um, I'm tempted to go with full wood beams, though, down here. Um, why didn't... Just for the extra hit that? points. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that was kind of like to deflect the incoming project particles, though. Something like that. Maybe. But uh, I, I kind of want... I, I kind of wanted to do something more like that, but uh, that, okay. that's what I had planned. Um, yeah, I think we're good on that. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to uninstall the actual barbette piece, if that's okay with you. Okay. Since that's just like meter gap, then metal wall, unless that's meant to be a feature down the whole length of the hole. Actually, yeah, uh, considering it's going to get hit with hash, is that a feature you want extended the whole length for this? Um, vehicle? gosh. I'm not entirely sure now. Um, Shall we just take it out and just whack it back in later? I mean, it's only like three rows of metal beams. Easy enough to install. Yeah. Show me, uh, show me what you have going on here. I want to see. I guess I'm just having a hard time yeah. visualizing. Um, what, I'm what I'm trying to get worked in and prefabbed is just the outer layer mm -hmm. of armor. Okay. So we can extend this. This is basically the armor for the uh, main bulk of the ship outside of its um, prow and keel. Okay. So prow and stern, rather. And then this is the internal space we have left to work with for everything else. So that's why I was trying to get prefabbed. Oh, I get you. So you just wanted a general. One General without feet, the uh, build, build the empty hole and then we without the barbette. There. Gotcha. Okay, that makes yeah. sense now. Okay, uh, yeah, then um, 
let's try doing like um, I don't know maybe a 75 meter section of it and then we could uh, do like slopey bits after that so you want a 75 meter this thing is an 8 meter piece at the moment yes Apologies for anyone in the stream. This is going to be a bit ear rapey, but uh, yes, needs must and all that jazz. Of course, you could always just mute it. Now, why would I do that? Because if you're. If I to put up with this, then they must put up with this. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, Chaos Lord Godzilla. Welcome to the stream, sir, and thank you for your request about the phase nuke, by the way. Um, that has been something I've been trying to think about. Uh, right, in your opinion, from least to most, what's your favorite weapon? I think my favorite weapon would have to be torpedoes. Your weapon? My favorite weapon um, would be torpedoes. And why is that? Well, they're extremely reliable for starters, and they can do cram level damage. And they're a lot more reliable than cram. Granted, you pay a premium for the ammo cost, but um, in a lot of cases, I'm willing to pay that to make sure that something has a big gaping hole on the uh, other side of the torpedo. So, yeah. Uh, I think my least favorite would probably be... That's a tough one. Um, because they all have their uses. Probably the simple weapon, uh, cannons, because they just don't seem like they have a very many applications to them, unless you're doing like aesthetic builds. I almost never used um, them. I never have used okay. them to be honest. How about okay, you, Ian? Um, for me, uh, honestly. Oh, if you'd asked me this before the changes, I'd have flat out said APS was my favorite. APS would probably be a, a second favorite for me. Yeah, I absolutely love the flexibility of the weapon system. Yes! Uh, Post-change, however... A lot uh, of people they, are switching over to cram. Change. Honestly, I'm not going to do that. Um, the, only thing I, the main thing I like about cram is the punch, but uh, cram is not the top rank weapon for me. Uh, I think, honestly, my favorite weapon nowadays is probably missiles. Missiles and are then, incredible, yeah. Yeah, I really, well, small missiles in particular, but I, I really like how flexible the missile system is, and I can work a lot of magic with that. Mm-hmm. For a lot of effect, you know? How long is this thing right now, Dama? Um, I believe it was like 40-some-odd. Yeah, uh, the so, length is 44 meters. Uh, that's, that's this puts it down to 50 meters now. Um, yeah, so my, my top is lasers in particular. So, <laughs> my top is missiles in particular, smaller missiles. Uh huh. Um, my second favorite's going to be lasers because I really like their precision and um, how complex they can be. Um, <laughs> they are useless uh, underwater, though. They, okay. Yeah, they do have their drawbacks, but they are usually a very effective weapon if you can build them right. Okay. I'm um, back. Then I and... think third for me is probably cram, and then fourth APS. Um, I don't know what the heck my lower opinion weapons are, but um, I actually disagree with your opinion on simple weapons, Dama. Um, no, no, it, it's just one weapon in particular. It, it's just the simple cannons, the um, the ones that just fired the the solid cannonball shot. Oh, you mean the old style? Yes. Ones? They, they can do some damage, but yeah, and you, they just don't have very good piercing, usually. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I'm back, and I see you've been working on the new hull, but I still have to disagree with the top he with the heavy armor up top. So... You never said why, and you just swapped out without saying anything. I did say that there, there was a good point to it in the fact that the top heavy armor is not necessary on most of the ship due to the fact that you probably won't have the citadel that high up if you have the citadel that high up there is a problem with the ship um okay. my counter to that is just flat out that a lot of shells from the side and any direction will be coming in at an angle 
so they're more likely to try and hit that general area. So I don't want De a weak spot in the armor. Definitely, but then again, there will be another plate in the deck, and if you're already going through the armor at such an angle, you'll have lots of blocks to go through. So just imagine a cram going from 4 to 5 degree angles, you have like 40% more blocks to go through. So I don't think the top 3 are necessary, I would say that if you want extremely thick armor, just leave the rest. Or that's my point. Plus most of plus if the ship is still using the aim point, which is present in this version, mm -hmm. you will, it will probably be aiming lower. So it won't go through that particular point, point most likely. And so yeah, most of my crafts that have been blown up, they've actually had their side, the corner bit shredded in most ships when I see them. I have had like, similar issues with the battle cruiser. Um, that that and, seems. And um, if if it's just using like a, a weapon aiming center mass, then they are quite likely to be hitting that corner area. So that... again, reinforce that. Area. All right. So th there are reasons why I was yeah. thinking it might be a good idea to do it that way. I'll just switch out some of the stone for a lightweight alloy if I'm looking at it, just to patch a possible weak spot if um, the explosion. That, 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 that re Wait, we've got the wood layer behind as well to act as an EMP. No, I, 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 was sa I was saying this spot, if you take a look from one of the sides there, mm -hmm. I, replaced the, I replaced a bit with alloys. Uh, because where where are you doing this at, matey? Uh, I left a hole <laughs> in there. There is a spot. I yeah, it's at the back of the craft, I believe. I left a hole there, and I would let, like instead of the stone, lightweight alloy in that spot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm fine with that. Hmm. Yeah, if you just want to run a beam of uh, alloy through that, that's fine. Yeah, done. And also done, so we both. <laughs> as long as we're all on the same page. Um, one thing I I was kind of thinking about uh, these uh, little like utility zones here on the bottom of the ship would could that potentially be a good place to put uh, ammo boxes? Mm, I would I wouldn't actually actually a uh, device in certain sections, but there is a point in adding them there. So my my advice would, is they would be very hard to hit there. You fly torpedoes. Could, but don't go overboard. Yeah, since we don't that, want them running too long in any. Yeah, given since you will level. explode the bottom, and the bottom is the le least protect is one of the less protected parts of the ship. Yeah, that's um yeah. So maybe localized ammo. But that's not the yeah yeah. I I was. I was actually thinking of sectioning it off anyway, so yeah, I think that yeah. could potentially work like that. Okay. I don't see any harm in it if you have an ammo storage nearby already, so that that is my viewpoint. On I that. mean, even with the even uh, could help with the aim point spoofing because that is a thing in two point four point nine. So just saying. Yeah, we've got a lot of options. Anyway, I don't think we need any sort of recoil absorption since on the 8 meter turret since this is 2.4.9 and frankly there is still a ton. Mm -hmm. we can... I can fit everything in without the, act without the actual recoil absorbers. There is only going to be four of those guns firing so I think PIDs will be able to handle that. Okay. So just a warning if the ship starts suddenly jerking to the side. Maybe that's my fault. Just grabbed a pre of the um, barbettes. Okay. Um, I'll be right back. We want we need to finish something. Would, uh, well, were we putting in these... Um, what kind of guns are we putting in here? Uh, you're the guy in charge. Um, I do want to quickly read a comment, though, if you're... Yes, I was, still, I was still listening, and I'm making the two main turrets. So you have the gun you're you the two are main me measuring, since there will be twins and triples. So you have the larger twins with the heavy APHE guns, and then you have the more spammy triple guns, which will fire something like probably the disruptors, 
Frag, Hash, Heat. Just a combination of shells. Okay, uh, Ion, okay. what were you saying? Um, I did have a comment I wanted to read. Yes, out, but go ahead, go ahead. Right, sorry. Um, Existence said, my favorite was the APS until they quote unquote did something. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that kind of sums up my feeling about it, honestly, though. Um, we've talked about this before, and I'm kind of um, ambivalent about the APS change in general, but they did definitely downgrade the weapon system. Mm hmm. Um, something. And then he goes on to say, I like the visuals and overall system of the packs. No, he never uses packs, never used packs as an armament, but still likes them. And then Tux weighs in and says, I have converted to cram and small missile spamming. Hmm. Uh, after my own heart there, especially the small missile spamming part, I love those things. Small missile spam is excellent because it overwhelms uh, lamb systems so easily. That's a good reason to have it. It depends on the lambs, but um, they are a massive drain to try and deal with, and they can be very effective. One of the things I like about them is that actually, um, pound for pound, ammo for ammo, um, small missiles is the most efficient damage dealer of all the missile types, uh, as well as kind of a pain to deal with unless you've got some kind of AOE missile defense. Yeah, that... They are very vulnerable to AOE missile defense, though. So. Yeah, um, something like, I don't know, um, like the, the, uh, flak belt blasters, those things are amazing against missile spam. Yeah, the problem is usually small individual small missiles just don't have the hole to deal with um, anything coming in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, where, is this is currently seventy four in length. That's close think? enough. Seventy six. I think that's yes. close enough for what we're wanting to do. Well, the actual armor bit is seventy two. But um, do you want the gun barbets at either end of this? Um. Actually, I would feel better if we got uh, the, the uh, engines in first and then started putting in uh, weapons. So it sounds like my next task might be the actual prowl then. Yeah. Okay. I'm taking I'm taking the bow of the ship. If you're taking, I... you're taking the bow of the ship. Yeah. If I put if I. I thought you were working on guns, do... matey. Yeah. If I can do something, I'll, it will be the bow since that's one of my favorite parts of well, the building. Dama, you're the overseer, so give us orders, please. Okay. Um. I remember the dreadnought. And what I was able to do with that. Okay, so I'll work on engines. Right. Um. And how about you work on the bow? Uh, I, because I was seriously considering having this being steam driven, and you have more experience than most people I know with this. Um, steam. -driven. Steam driven. Yes. And so that means the stern of the ship, probably the back section. Yes. Yeah. I was about to ask. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Um, so I, if uh, I want something that would just be used in combat and would uh, only be used for combat, so some uh, some kind of a steam system that could spool up fairly quickly. If need be, we could use um, some extra ignition boilers for faster burn rate that then cuts off after a certain time. That could work. Yeah, just, just to ramp the pressure up a bit further, faster, and then once it's at a good level, it, they'll slack off and be maintaining. Yeah, I think that could work. Um, there are, there's another couple of comments. Okay. Actually, if, um, right. Um, Tux says just the ammo cost is an investment. Um, continuing on from the cram and small missile comment, and I agree very much. So you have to decide where you want to spend your ammo more often than not, especially with mm -hmm. ammo changes planned to come in, which I wish they'd hurry up with because that is a big question mark nowadays. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of faith in that, but... Yeah, I mean, they say ammo storage is going to be massively increased as compensation for losing their passive regen, um, but that isn't hard figures in any way, shape, or form, so I don't know what And they don't going. really have any hard idea of what to do about ammo regeneration yet. The only thing that they got is the damn um, ammo processors, which got nerfed all the mm. fun. Oh, Tux just added that um, they want to book the developers for 3 meter, 5 meter, and 7 meter props that can attach to a fuel engine system. That would be awesome, yeah. I, yeah, I would, would I would like that.
I've been actually arguing for that for quite a while, and yeah, no, so how's that been going for you? It, it has been falling on deaf ears. Mm. Right, um, next up is Chaos Lord Godzilla, who says the most fun I ever had when playing from the depths is when I beat hard difficulty with only small missiles and torpedoes and nothing else. That's that's very yeah, doable. That is doable. I was gonna say. Very, very doable, yes. So, yeah, good on you for that one. Um, existence says finish the hole and then add guns. Uh, if you ask him. And that's what, the one that made me stop and say I wanted to read the comments, but... Uh, <laughs> he has a very valid point, considering we don't know yes. where the guns are going. And, honestly, we can't work that out at all until we know what kind of bow Matey's going to put on this thing. Yeah. Um, I can, around, I can thing as well? work around the guns actually already being in place, so... Just keep that in mind. Well, um, we, we want to. I think we want to know the shape of the bow you're going to install before we start trying to place guns on it. That's that's what my thought was. Yeah, yeah we kind of okay. need to know where the guns will start and end. I guess is what Ian's trying to get across, which makes perfect yeah. good sense to me. Definitely. So I mean, that, maybe start with the and, stuff as well. and maybe start with the you to start with the engine sections. I'll be back in like five to ten minutes and then I can do the bow and then we do the rest of the ship. Okay. Does that seem fair? Um, yeah, my, my last question was to confirm how long you're wanting the ship to be, Dan. I'm considering it's at 76 odd meters at the moment. Um, I think we... Uh, I think I said about 150. You were saying that, yeah, but it's only about half that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, 140, 150. The, the, just considering by the way. The reason why I said that is so that uh, we we got the middle section now. We could add seventy five. I mean, not, not seventy five, but I feel, uh, I feel like I want to extend the armor section further. Then, well, then just the seventy five meters. Well, the reason I I came up you know, with the uh, the uh, the seventy five for the middle part is so that we can we would have enough room on the front and back and still keep it about one hundred and fifty meters. Oh wait, you're going to have decking sections, aren't you? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Am I making Sorry, sense I'm... now? Yes. Um, Sorry, I should have oh, explained this, that better. This is a symptom of the fact that I usually don't build like big deck areas like that. So yeah, I was getting slightly confused as to what the heck was going on. No, that's okay. Come on, me. <laughs> okay. Where the hell is the? Oh, there Question, it is. Question, Dama, do you, do you have a prefab for any sort of good ammunition? Because I've got a, because I have actually hooked up the turrets just now. Um, are you talking like for the eight meters? Yeah, I'm slow. I have done one mistake. Oh god, it's that platform again. I know, I know. I know you don't like it. It's not. It's not that. It's just that I object. It's to loud. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, I would actually prefer. You could actually use the ruby engines. Just straight up ruby engines with the fuel lines being in between the two. Uh, well, there's the a, there's engine. a. Me and Rizul actually did some math on this, and uh, the conclusion that we came to was is the uh, the behemoth engine here is actually uh, more space efficient. So that's why I like to use it so much. All right. I don't subject to it. So it, it's not a decision that was made without the other consideration, trust me. I've actually did some of the uh, math on it myself, and yeah, he's right. Which, it's kind of strange for me, because I'm terrible at math, but, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna... God, I wish you could despawn things in multiplayer so much. I really do. Anyway, um, should I just delete it? Because I'm worried that this is going to lag things to crap and back. It probably will if you leave it. So, yeah, if you've got what you're wanting from it, I would say delete the thing. Dama, I invite you to just fire the turrets. I believe it's all hooked up properly now. Okay, I'm just going to delete the platform then. Um... Worst case, I can add even more coolers. So, there's that. Uh, which ones are you working on, matey? Uh, uh, the platform off in the distance, the, the one 
forward. Okay. The backwards gun has been tested to oblivion with 415 mil shells, so good mid caliber shells, especially with adding disruptors, etc. But the forward turret has been tested, and I just managed to couple it together. If there is problems with cooling, I can definitely add more coolers to it. If there's too much cooling, I can definitely add even more recoil absorption. Okay. Uh, I would like a little bit of recoil absorption, but um, it's not necessary. Oh wait, no, sorry. This is previous version. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's just mainly to help with roll stabilization, uh, but it's not like a huge concern. I mean, I managed to sneak in some. I saw. At the same I point. saw. Um. Hey, so I'll be back back in like five minutes. Hey, Rizal. I wonder where he keeps wandering off to. He's got like a bladder infection or something. He needs to get that looked at. Anywho, I'm going to. Oh, uh... oh you mean money? Yeah. I don't know, probably family stuff. I don't know. I'm not yeah. going to fault them for it. That's right. I'm just poking fun. Uh, where the hell is this thing going to... I'm trying to figure out where the exhaust exits from this thing. I can never remember. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. I think that may do. I'm going to make sure that I got these about in the center of the ship here. That looks about right. Uh... Well, I'm, the way I'm treating it is that that um, section you've got there is roughly the middle of the ship. Maybe a bit towards the rear. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the, uh, the center of mass trying to give myself an idea where the middle of the ship is, but uh, the center of mass seems to keep moving on me, so... <laughs> well, that's because I'm currently working on the prow, so... Okay. Sorry, prow? Stern. You're fine. I, I just wondering what the hell's going on, because Mady said he left and he was the last person working on the hull, so I was like, the fuck? Uh, no, you gave me instructions to work on the hull as well. Gotcha. So that's why the center of mass is shifting, because I'm extending the rear section outwards. Alright, just making sure we're all on the same page. Especially since you said that you wanted it to be like a um, 100 odd meter thing. So. 150. Yeah. So I think I've added like um, 20 odd meters this way. So we're at 90... We're at about 100 something length right now. 114, yeah. All right, so how much engine power does this give us? I think these are about 20k each. Uh-oh. Something did not paste correctly. Oh, we'll try that again. There we go. All right, so I got four of the behemoths in. Uh, of course, they'll still have to have their exhaust routed, but that won't be too big a deal here. Um, I think the behemoths, they do about... What is it? Uh, 2k... Or, no, 20k power. Hello, Ethan, sir. Welcome to the stream. What's up? Wait, wait. When are you here, are they? No, wait, no, that's a different story. Yeah, welcome to the stream. Um, existence is reminding me that I'm working on the stern of the ship. I think he said that because of um, the fact that... Well, actually, yeah, I was going to say, Dammer. What? Does, does this overall shape look okay to you for the um, rear section? Uh, let me zoom out real quick so I can see what's so going on. A quick look there. Uh, let's see. Um, is... Okay. Chaos says Razzle's name sounds like a pasta brand. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, I like the look of that. I, that. I think you're doing pretty good so far. Yeah, um, the bit I added as the stern bit is marked off by the set of stairs, which drops the deck level by one. Okay. 
Sorry, for some crazy reason, I thought that was the bit that Matey was working on. No, that, that's the opposite end. Yeah. Um, I should have been paying ship. attention what the uh, way the direction arrows are giving me, so... Yeah, mm. I think that, I think Existence got confused about that, because it kind of reminded me of which end I'm meant to be on. Yeah. Uh, um, and Razzle says that quote-unquote cruiser you guys are working on is bigger than the BB that he started to fiddle with yesterday. <laughs> um... Yeah, it probably will be. Uh, actually, you know, with the kind of armament May describing, uh, it almost seems like this is going to be about as powerful as the battle hymn. Yeah, so um, I'll be honest, I'm narrowing it down, so maybe that's what exists and confused as well. It's because, like, um. I'd like to have um, a bit more of a slender build on most ships, so I'm narrowing this bit down here. I just extended the main armoring of the hull further because it was still at the same width. Uh huh. And then um, what I'm thinking is, since you wanted me to install a steam drive, I'm going to actually have the armor section end maybe at where the narrowing stops. Mm -hmm. So this back bit will actually sticking over, and then this will be actually to help protect the steam from overhead as well. Okay. So it'll be like... Um, Maybe an extended bit, then there's a recess underneath where the uh, steam section is going to be installed. So, Ion, just out of curiosity, how do you like to do your exhausts when uh, you're building a ship? I mean, how, do you pipe it towards the top, do you pipe it towards the bottom, or just the nearest? Towards the bottom, actually. Um, I normally route exhaust through the underside, but because A, it's hard to detect. Yes. Um, and B, if they do detect and go for heat source, which is not a thing anymore, mm -hmm. as I understand, but which is which sucks, but there you go. Um, they actually wind up going for the center mass, ish, where there's heavier armor. So their shots are less effective in general than trying to go at the top section, which usually has more weapon systems and mm -hmm. so is more vulnerable to incoming damage. Okay. So there are some reasons behind it, but. Um, I, I, I honestly also think it looks kind of silly having the a fuel engine exhaust just bubbling up under the water. It's like, hmm. I, okay, I usually uh, pipe it at the bottom, uh, mainly because if you happen to lose your um, exhaust, then your engines are just going to keep busting cylinders all the time. So, I mean, you're going to lose a bunch of engine power. So that's the yeah, reason. It's, it's, it's less that you lose exhaust. It's only if you lose clear line of sight for the exhaust. Exactly. So I tr I see a lot of people, they'll like pipe the exhaust directly out through the funnel and the top of the ship. I, I don't necessarily agree with that because that just seems like it's a very weak spot that uh, if something were to happen to it, you'd just be kind of screwing yourself. Open. Yeah. Like, if, if there's a hole gets blasted in, the, blasted in the middle of that funnel, then yeah, you're going to lose your cooling. I think I fudged putting one of these engines in place. I'm going to have to rip it out and redo it. But yeah, a lot of designs, I see people, they just want to pipe it out the top so it looks cool. Because yeah, it's, it's that realistic versus actual game mechanic yeah which i'm like well, what's the point of doing that i mean we have smoke generators to f fulfill that purpose you know i don't know i i guess it's just a preference thing i mean you guys do it, it whatever you want so it just as far as game mechanics go that just seems like the most logical to me Oh, by the way, Rizal, I have not had a chance to look at your uh, ages yet. I've been, uh, I, I spent most of the time on Sunday uh, editing videos, so yeah. I haven't quite got to it yet, in case you were wondering. Alright, I'm back. Welcome back, and matey. Already looking at the visuals and trying some different styles with the status at the back. Anyways... Um, here we go. Um, Chaos, Chaos Lord Godzilla is weighing in. Says the way that they do 
the exhaust is to make it go very, very far underwater and then surround it with wood. Why with wood? Hmm. It's a good question, actually, especially since that's a very buoyant material. I think... I'm guessing the premise is because it's very cheap, so if the heat draws incoming fire, it's not going to cost much to fix it. Though, um, so that makes sense, yeah. Water, that also presents a bit of a dragging issue as well, so... I usually just do with, do with 2 meter, 3 meter metal at the bottom of a ship in metal, mm -hmm. and then just draw the exhaust down through there, because... It's the bottom of the ship. There's not, and there's basically no ships which use heavy deep water torpedoes in the entire game. If you do, then th there is a good chance you'll intercept them even then. So I just rely on the fact that dumb luck is not something that will happen. If I usually have engine two engine blocks separated, so. Even if one gets blown out, I still have a retain like 50%, 60% of the power. Existence says he does it the way you, you're talking about, Dammer. Um, exhaust underneath and then on his funnels he uses smoke. Okay. That and the smoke block does a hell of a lot better job being yeah. smoky, so. That's right. <laughs> yeah, being smoky. <laughs> that, is, that is the key thing, yeah. I'll try the other shell with the hash, which has more. No, these are six meter shells. I shouldn't be using those. Um, you can if you want. I mean, you'd probably have to extend them a little bit, but uh, that's kind kind of the general idea of uh, what I thought of uh, as far as shell assignment for mains. You could look at that, but actually, it may be worth it. What's that? You could probably look at it and just adjust them. I have them on the platform, just trying to, to get the thing re ready to fire. Mm hmm. So. So that's me. about 80k power right there. And I guess we would probably go with APHE or maybe ho Hollow Point HE. Um, that could actually work for stripping a lot of the armor off, so, so just alter the big gun between APHE. Yeah, and I'm thinking Hollow one that uh, just does total block damage, and the other one you know, would be more akin to something that would uh, do internal damage. Just to have both bases covered, am I making sense? Yeah, which would be probably just stake a hollow point on AG frag, and then have the APHE shell. Yeah. So. And do you have any ideas for shells, or...? Something explosive. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm mostly a bit rusty on shells. Because I, I think basically I, my mind has been corrupted by the changes in recent versions. So mm. it's like I genuinely struggle to think about how efficient fuels. Uh, sorry, uh, different fuels. Hmm, there's no different fuels in this game. Different shells. Uh -huh. How well they work. So it's like um, hmm. that's one of the drawbacks of the new system. It's I've been struggling to relearn what kind of shell I might like to try. Like I I don't know how the hesh is supposed to work anymore. I don't... Uh, I, I think uh, Hesh was having some issues in current that uh, haven't been quite fixed yet, but I, I don't yeah. know if they have or not. But Th There were some issues with it not being... not using the angle mm -hmm. and just appearing in a 90 degree cone once it reached the other side of the armor. So, but I don't know most about the most about that. Although, now that I'm looking at the shells, we could use a super cap for the twins and just have them as I, I think the shells I'm most comfortable with are probably APHE. Yeah. But, so. su but they would benefit from that. That's why I'm, that's why I'm suggesting using mm -hmm. super cap, since that would mean you can go underwater and... I... 
I would actually be okay with Super Kev. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to lose some of the um, damage potential there, but uh, being able to more uh, accurately hit um, underwater targets, because usually that's where the majority of the uh, most important bits and bobs are going to be, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with using Super Kev. Why not use cramps? Hello. Because I don't like cramps. <laughs> but cramps in the current version of FTD kind of rock. Is, is that you? Guys? Yeah, just yeah, it is. the only reason why they rock in current is because they made APS suck. Doesn't change that they rock. <laughs> Since no one answered, I'm actually going to check my... Discord to see who the hell that is. Yes, hello, Raz. I, it was you, but, uh, <laughs> I was pretty sure it was. Um, you I was. Just... Can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Um, I just okay. wasn't sure if, if it was you or um, Hertz, because normally it's Hertz Meister that drops in. No, this I was. Was it the? Uh... It was the. Yes, it was the. Um, the exit that kind of threw. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, he's a. So, <laughs> Hadn't I can. I can't load the shells, so I'll ask. You, Demma, to check it out. Okay. In the meantime, I'll try to work on the stupid collateral damage shell. Okay. Which I have in mind. Uh. Wait, so your shells aren't loading? Uh, into the twin. They should be. They are 8 meters. There's an 8 On meter my shell. end, uh. No, the shell isn't shown as complete here. Excuse me. Really? Yeah, it it's showing that most of the front of it, it's still gunpowder casing. <laughs> I oh, guess we yeah. got some desync shit going on here. No, I think like that it, so that may be it. Yeah, that's probably why it's not going in, is because the whole front of the shell is gunpowder casing, so it's making it invalid. That would that, be my guess. That should be yeah, it wouldn't take out. a shell like that. One. <laughs> so just just take, just take a look at the. I tried changing it now, so see if it works. Okay. There, there's something in there. I used heavier. Yeah, it's still not changing. So. Uh, what what platform are you building on, matey? Uh, the my one. Own platform. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the shell hasn't changed for me like at all over there. It's still showing so, the uh, head of it is still made up of gunpowder casing. That is a composite head, of course. Yeah, so I would have done body. composite head. So three, three H E pen depth, then the emergency ejection diffuse, and lastly you have the super. Then it's all gunpowder. Yeah, I can screenshot it and send it to you. If you want. Actually, yeah, that that would be just fine. Uh, Happy Ball, hey, how's it going, Happy Ball? He says, uh, how about you all go for the name and make an EMP cram? <laughs> um, actually, something related to that. I've been waiting for a moment to get it in, but I've yeah, got go for it. going on again. As well. uh, the most recent one, actually, is Chaos Lord saying, if you want to know a really OP shell type, put Hollow Point EMP. Uh, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that was a bit of a definite response there. Yeah. Well, Mady, what's your opinion on that? My opinion on that is that that's BS because the hollow point will just destroy all the blocks the EMP is supposed to be going through. Hmm. Doesn't the EMP using... surge on contact before damage is calculated? It, it may, but then again, you still have a problem. Maybe the EMP is on the block when the hollow point damage gets calculated. Yeah, so I, I would I would I would say that it's probably a bit dangerous with larger shells. Like smaller shells definitely I'd probably even try that in fact. Just because I'm evil and I want to see all of the AIs cry. That is entirely fair. I don't begrudge that to you at all. Um I I just wanted to mention something uh, interesting that um, 
I believe it was uh, Normal69 was talking about, uh, he seems to think that there's probably going to be a, another rebalance to here uh, probably before April when they once again plan on fully releasing the game. Uh, what are you guys' uh, thoughts if that's going to be a possibility or not? I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. If they're doing that, I'm gonna gonna be screaming at them. Look at what you've done to APS. Fix it. Yes. <laughs> I'm 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 honestly more worried about what that would do to the fan base because if you remember the figures you you guys were actually dick managing to dig up, it's not fared too well with all the yeah. more recent changes. I would actually say that if they do an April rebalance, quote unquote. It's going to be quite. It's going to still be decent. I hope they don't release in the first of April because we know how well, how well that one. Oh yeah. yeah. It'll probably get treated like an April Fools. Uh, but other than that, I would actually say that if they're aiming for the June release date, which is I some a little birdie told me that we get a couple of months back, so don't take it for granted. It definitely has been confirmed. That, uh, uh, does the little birdie have a name beginning with a B and ending with an N? Not that one. Oh. Well, this one has a name beginning with J, so mm. it should be a little bit more calculated. Okay, so someone... Okay. I, I'm i trying to stay out of politics here, just having a discussion about game mechanics, so... Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Um... Anyway, there was some more stuff. Uh, sorry, guys, in the most recent chat, it's like um, <laughs> everything's been. Everyone's been talking. So, let's see. Um, Razzle, you actually meant is Razzle in the chat? I see you wandered off. Um, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you, you you pointed out um, to Dama that uh, you got feedback from Hertz and me already. So your ship's actually on the workshop. I would like to mention you actually put it on the workshop before you actually got your feedback from me. So it was just on Hertz's feedback at that point. <laughs> Yeah, but he gave such a glowing uh, yeah, feedback that I kind of felt uh, it's warranted. And then you essentially said exactly the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? Are we talking about the uh, ship that you sent me over the weekend yeah, that I didn't have a yeah, chance yeah, to look yeah. at? Yeah. My apologies for that. It just my work schedule doesn't allow me to do a whole lot on like Fridays and Saturdays. It's perfectly fine. So, yeah. So. This should be absolutely fine with the shell I've designed, like 42k kinetic damage and 4 Oh yeah. Damage. Uh, what's the uh, AP on it? AP 10.2. I think we can improve that somehow. 10.2? That's not bad. It's not it's bad. bad. It's, it's, go, it's probably going to force uh, its way through most metal armor and some heavy armor. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely confetti any, any kind of wood. <laughs> Yeah. But that... the four and a half K explosive damage is probably enough to wreck an engine. So and that's the biggest functional compartment we have. But something I wanna make clear to uh, people who are listening in on this, uh, um I I don't have any beef with cram cannons. I really don't. I think they do have a place. I just don't like how they work. I, I... apologize. I, I, I the just were a bit different on them, honestly, but huh? Yeah, I, I, I wish the mechanics were a bit more reliable slash programmable. There are ways to control them, but um, they feel like they're a little contrived to me. But that said, I do still actually like the system overall for what it does, which is like big impacts. Yeah, they have their place. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. I, I, it's just not a weapon system that I like uh, using because it just doesn't feel as fun to me as APS does. I mean, there is of course some t something to the fact that you can, you you can point, click, and if the enemy doesn't evade, the enemy is probably going to be regretting that life decision for the couple of seconds that yeah. his life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I recommend uh, cramps was actually because you're building a fairly large ship, regardless of what you're calling it. Uh -huh. and well, yeah. The main weapons on a ship like that. They're just meant to annihilate other ships, and Kranz do that job fairly well. Yeah, I'm not That's arguing fine. that. It, they're good for s large, slow-moving targets, but... Uh, 
<laughs> you get into the later stages of the game, they're not going to do you a whole hell of a lot of good against uh, the uh, Scarlet Maybe. Dawn. I don't you see them doing any good against the Scarlet Dawn because of that reason. You definitely need APS at that point. Yes. That, I, it's a non-question. Just because of the fact that the evasion meta is overpowered. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Devna, please take a look at the platform. Trapper's leaving. What's up? Trapper's leaving, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Cue the crap dance, but I won't say more. Well, let's just... Maybe what I'm, I'm... What were you asking me to look at? I'm sorry. Uh, the gun itself. I've sent you the picture in... Okay. Uh, games. random... Okay. You can just pull... Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. I mean, I would have done something similar anyway. Um, uh, and I'm assuming you already got the... Yeah, you got the fuses on there. Okay, yeah, that that looks good to me. The fuses aren't customized in there, but... I usually go for, like, about three layers and maybe, like, a 0.3 delay. Uh, in this case, I would actually go for probably four layers and do point... Yeah, the point 0.3 delay is good, but four layers means that you get... That, for example, the third has three layers of armor at most, yeah. and you'll go through those, and then you can go through one layer of citadel armor, so, for example, the turrets. Mm -hmm. Then you explore. So, that was my idea, at least. I need the forward turret placement figured out in order to the bow, or I can just steal a bit of the ship and build the bow regardless, and then we, we can just attach it to the front. Say you on that. I'm sorry, what was that? Could you run that by me one more time? Uh, that I just need to know where where the internals and turrets will end so I can start doing the bow. Uh, I've already got the uh, engines in. Uh, I haven't put any lamp systems in yet, uh, but uh, that... Exactly. Yeah. So instead, I have, a, I have an idea, which mm -hmm. is just... I'll extend the ship slightly and just put the bow there. Worst case, we're just prefabbing it. Okay. The entire bow, so it's going to take like five minutes to place, but... Yeah, yeah, do what you gotta do. We'll figure it out as we go. Uh, let's yeah. see here. I think I'm gonna have four different AIs on this. Four? Yeah. Yeah, I get. Huh? Three I can agree with, but four? Why the fourth? I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the fourth one just yet, but I want to have different ones so they'll target different things. Like, mains will target the uh, largest, uh, lowest, and slowest craft. Um, secondaries uh, to uh, target similar, but smaller and faster. And uh, then, like, a separate one for anti-air, which would be yeah, the highest and fastest. Um... I'm thinking maybe... Torpedo. Torpedo control, if you go for, for example, three, four launchers per side, remote guided torpedoes. Maybe we, maybe I could install those into the bow. So you have remote That's guided a thought. torpedoes go for literally the lowest target. Mm -hmm. So they first target submarines if there are large ships. That would be, be my idea of why you would actually do that. Yeah. Thing. Um, <clears throat> I'll modify the armor scheme slightly since I see somewhere you could save potentially six resources per single per four meter beam. Maybe I think I got a good spot for you to put uh, the um, the shell customizers. Um, try putting them in between the uh, engines inside the uh, engine room. I think that would be a great place to put them. They'd be pretty well protected there. I was actually considering that, but at this point I just want to test fire the turret since okay. there may be some issues with cooling and I can't get the data since... No, you're fine. Uh, I can just go off of the uh, screenshot that you gave me and uh, 
put it in there. Would that work? If you if you were to do that and then test fire it, that would be amazing since then I get the data and I can work with it. Uh, how many modules is it using? Do you it's, remember? I it's a nine meter. It's nine meters of module. You okay? It's in, since you then comp compress three of them them into this one. This is too much damage. Uh, hold on. Um, actually, I just think of like two big propellers on the back there. I don't know if we need the third one down the middle because go, go either go two or go four. You don't want to end up like the Bismarck. I uh, just go two if you if uh, that's cool. Oh, fine, yeah. yeah. Um... You can put reduction gears back to back like that. Oh, oh, oh exist it? What? No, you can't. You have, to put a, you have to put a shaft in between. Yeah, I was just looking back here at Iron Setup, and I I, I thought they, they need... um. No, they have got shaft between them. Oh, okay. I guess the models are just so big that I can't see yeah, the... Yeah, it's the model, yeah. There's this okay. Big I was like, how the hell did there you do that? Is actually, there is actually a piston in there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Existence said, um, oh god, he's making a German ship shaft system right now. So Existence reacted to that as well. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. Um. Th there are a few things I still want to get to on my comments, though. Honestly. Yeah. But yeah. Go. Struggling. Go for so. it. Whenever you get a chance. Yeah. Just go for it. All right, so yeah. Um. An earlier comment from Resistance was um. He well. He literally said um. Then it's uh, before you guys add guns, please make the twin main guns super fire, based like the USS Nevada class battleships, uh, super firing triples. The super firing triples on top of the twins uh, will look very weird. That was existence. That, 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 that is one possibility. The other possibility is going just to reply to existence. The Pensacola class heavy cruisers, or as they were originally inventively called by the Americans, light cruisers. Yeah. Yes, they had 10 8 inch guns, that, and the Americans thought they could get away with calling them light cruisers. Definitely. So. There is a lot of DACA. Those okay. had twins down the bottom since the hull was too thin. But then again, oh, he's got four of them. Existence has a point. I mean, that, that is a point in what he's saying because even the Italian Julia, Julia Cesare class, after their refits, had guns. And yes, I'm going on an, as a ship nerd. Sorry for that. No, you're it's fine. fine. Um, another comment which is almost 20 minutes old now from Tux. <laughs> Sorry, Tux. Yeah, as, as I said, I have, I have a lot of trouble trying to interrupt anyone, so the conversation's going on getting in the way of that. It I'm happens. Like, Sorry about that, Tux. Right, Tux says, um, suggests a squash HE secondary um, shape charge, and then GP gunpowder, I'm guessing, works yeah. quite well for, him, for them. So. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, Happy Ball, uh, I'm just getting back to yours, sorry about this. Uh, he's suggesting a uh, Hesh Disruptor Mixed Shell. I don't know if you could do Hesh and Disruptor Mixed. Um, you can. Ooh, if that works, that's the, the Hesh tends to punch into interior layers, doesn't it? Uh, you're thinking of Heat. Oh. Um, See, I'm getting... I'm mixed heat ha heat has a secondary charge, which you can like slap anything onto the front of. But... Um, yeah. yeah, uh, you the, can't do the, that with well, Hesh. The, the thing is with the Disruptor, well, we are in two point. Actually, yeah, shields are actually worth a damn in this version, so. <laughs> Can I get that in writing, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, sure, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, admittedly, it's not something that it's come up in conversation much because we normally talk about the APS change. Yes. But yeah, the shield change I really don't like. I was and actually more of this version be before the whole thing. Like, um, they go, "Ooh, angle doesn't matter at all. The incoming shell velocity doesn't matter at all." Um, after those changes, the shields have—I've just felt them. They are absolutely worthless. Um, question, uh, matey, are we wanting to do a mixed shell type on the main guns, or are we just uh, doing pin depth on them? Uh, I was thinking going with. I remember you said back. something about a hollow point, maybe. Hollow yeah, point that's frag? Good. That's good. I have this as my test case. Mm -hmm. And if I get my test case to be 
working, I can then build on top of that. I just need the stat for the turret. So, so if there is not enough cooling, I can add more coolers and such. Okay. That was my main point. Okay. Well, that's interesting. What's that, Ian? I deleted the um, max rotation gears, mm -hmm. sorry, the, the set, the, the whatever the hell they are, and um, when it died, it actually turned into a radiator block. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Um, weird. Can you get fat... I'm sorry, matey, uh, what were you going to say? Um, somebody's been lazy with the programming. Yes, something has not been updated properly. Anyway, very clearly. I was going to ask uh, Ayn real quick, um, can you get faster rotation speeds using just one piston instead of two? Um, you... Well, what I tend to find actually is, it's how well it transfers the power. Uh -huh. Like how quickly it can wind up is usually... Um, a symptom of how many pistons, but a good steam system you want to test it. So I'm just testing with two right now, okay. So, and I'll test it with a given boiler setting, and then I'll try it with one, and we'll see how well it, it winds up to speed. Yeah, I'm not questioning it. I'm just uh, curious so, uh, as to uh, why you're doing it like that. I I just this is from I'm what just, I've heard. I'm doing that because yeah, but I'm, I just put two in because with these system these pistons you can get two of them running off a single pipe with just a okay. single T split piece. Ultimately, you want to make the steam system as small as you can. But um, in the case of the main drives themselves, it gives more um, inertia. So they hold their power better if you have more pieces in them. So uh, I think it is more efficient in transferring the power if you have more pistons. And it also means the pistons are safer if you happen to overload the steam pressure as well. Okay. But I wasn't planning on doing that one, if I'm honest. No one ever really plans on overloading it until it happens. Yeah, but that, that's why I've also got reduction gears and things. But um, my issue is, of course, that it's actually going to draw power from these steam drives to run the rest of the ship, not just from your fuel engine. So, yeah. So I have to make sure that they've got enough power going through them to compensate for that without losing propeller speed. Okay. Just wondering what your thought process was on that. It just seemed contradictory to what I knew, so that's why I was asking. No, they're... they're, they're it, well, they are planning an overhaul on the Steam, after all, if last I heard. Now, yeah, a overhaul on Steam, I can get behind that, um, because, well, they're just not as efficient as I'd like them to be. Um, actually, their efficiency is leaps and bounds above where it was. Yeah, that's what I heard uh, last on that. Um, I also heard that the uh, larger boilers, uh, they're more efficient than the small ones. Oh yeah, that that is absolutely confirmed. Um, if you remember that fighter I showed you showed you a, a, last, a week or so ago, mm -hmm. and that was actually built around a, a biggish boiler. If you're using the uh, settings to maintain a low steam pressure, they they burn more efficiently the lower the pressure is. So I take it that you're somewhat pleased with the changes. Oh yeah, that that is a great change. That. Um, it's made them far more viable in terms of um, better sustained craft. It seemed like that that's a pretty good uh, balancing mechanic. Of the uh, uh, the larger ones are more efficient because they also take longer to oh, spool yeah. up. So they, they do, but um, they also need a reason to use the big ones over the smaller ones because yes, not much of one. But the the benefit benefit of having like a bigger internal um, boiler space is huge. So it's well worth it in terms of material efficiency just to have a bigger one, no matter what other benefits you might get from it, which I'm mm -hmm. not sure about. So yeah, that, I am pleased. Good. Iron Mark III is pleased with some of the steam changes that have come through. Yeah, it that definitely you know, was something that needed to be touched on, because uh, yeah. I, that's one of the reasons it, why I always steered away from steam, unless it's like for incredibly small builds, like a tank or something. It, 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 it's almost like it wasn't quite complete. It's like I think the problem was it was an early pass kind of thing. That's, that seems build. like a, a lot of stuff in from the depths is when it... Yes, yes it is. When it's initially it put in, it just kind of... Uh, well, let's just throw this out in the wilderness and see what happens with it. And then they come back and balance it way, way, way later. So, Pretty much. Uh, 
Mady, were you around for last time when uh, me and Ian were talking about things that we liked and didn't like about current? I don't think so, or at least it's an interesting topic for another discussion, isn't it? Well, I I thought it's something we could touch on a bit because uh, we didn't really get to your uh, opinions on that. So, well, the thing I will touch on is that with AP exchanges, I was the most heavily against sh shield changes. Well, I don't know if you're the most, but yeah, you were against them. So, yeah, I I was fighting them from the very moment. Grava just started started to poke at them. Yeah. At that point, I, I immediately went after his reasoning for them, since it is something that, as was proven by, with first pass, even though it was necessary, there is a lot of contention around it, and doing it poorly, well, we know how that resulted. So that's probably the thing I like the least. Then resource change is definitely something I'm not in favor of. Mm -hmm. This is mostly this is well, not nothing personal with devs, but I just don't like the idea that we should be punished for actually using better craft, so more power. <sighs> or at least that, or at least that's my viewpoint on the whole thing. Well, let me ask you this. I, I'm I'm kind of curious to know what your opinion would be on it because I I've made this a, a point several times, and I I don't know if it's something that's seriously being discussed or not. But do you feel in any way that the game has is being simplified for newer players to its own detriment? Oh, yes, definitely. I will agree to that any time of the week. Get me drunk and I still agree to that because even though you promise to buy me beer if, we, if I disagree. Because it's one of the main problems with games like this just before release because you try to appear to the, the mystical wider audience. And well, you can have definitely quote me on that since I've seen it several times. Okay. It, 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 got, it happens all over, obviously, that kind of thing. Because if you have a niche game, the, the problem is it may not be market viable in some points. So the devs just go, well, let's just simplify this and this and this and see what comes of that. Nothing uh, good, the ever. Prob the problem is if you try to simplify for the wider audience, there is a point at which the game becomes too simple even for them and it loses its spirit at which point well, um, you, lost often... the, you actually get, you actually disown the people who were promoting your game the most so i'll take that as a resounding yes yeah okay uh ian uh did you want to weigh in on that um there were signs recently that games companies are, are well the big triple a guys are actually starting to work out that this is what's going on but it's why like um more recent entries in many series have struggled compared to previous ones it's like they were again chasing this mythical wider, wider audience. audience yes yeah, actually so, and they, they're just losing the popularity that they once had for because they're just alienating everyone for me the uh, the draw of from the depths was uh, always the complexity that was uh, that was the draw for me on that yeah, well, what, what happened to the shield system is a perfect example. Uh, Rizul, would you like to weigh in on this topic? I'd, I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are. Um, one of the reasons I really liked uh, FD when I first joined it one and a half years ago or something like that um, was that I could I could have so many options to create whatever I wanted. There were thousands of different ways of going about it. Mm-hmm. And I feel that that concept is still very much uh, present, but I also feel that they lost the focus a bit. They're now going all over the place. So rather than saying they simplified the game, what I've seen in the last couple of changes, uh, the patch notes is, uh, sorry, not patch notes, the last couple of editions and changes is that they simply added random stuff. Stuff like steam drills. What the fuck, guys? I think the problem is is that there's too many ideas that they're trying to work on all at once. I feel like they have lost their focus entirely. Yes, 
that's what I meant. In the beginning, in my opinion, it was a game meant for building ships and maybe some other craft, but primarily for ships. Uh, Happy Ball says, Sniff Sniff is uh, that elitism in the air I smell? I don't feel <laughs> like it's elitism, Happy Ball. I, I know it may sound like it, but... It's, it's concern about the direction of the game itself, yeah. rather than going like, ooh, we were here first, you must listen to us, rah, rah, rah. It's, it's not. It's, um... I've one would like a lot more people to be playing this game than are. My... Um, like, nowadays. So, I want more people in, I want new people in, but... Absolutely! It's, it's diluting things that were... I think it's a case of, if, it, if um, stuff being fixed that was not broken in the first place. Yes. That's, I think, that, that's, that's what it boils down to for me as well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hmm. Uh, and um, it just... It seems to me that instead of people wanting to learn the way it, that things are done as far as mechanics goes, uh, it just seems like to me that they would rather just change them entirely to suit their own purposes instead of learning them. I think part yeah. of the friction is also how they are, um, they have been see, more or less ignoring or not communicating with um, the existing player base while doing these changes as well. Yeah, Which, I, so, yeah. I, I can That's agree not they have not well. been communicating well with, uh, actually, it, it seems to me that they don't really know how to handle the veteran player base at all right now, because it just seems like they don't, if they refuse to listen to it altogether. Am I making sense? Or yeah. do you guys feel similar? There was a point where they just stopped giving a fuck about the older players. Who just dropped the shit? Was that uh, me? Hey. Did you just caps lock it again? Nope. Yeah, yeah you did, matey. So I wanted to see what kind of kick these engines will have at the moment. So I was going to latch it straight back up again. Uh, maybe I've been kind of filling in the spot between your bow and uh, the rest of the yeah, hull. Probably. I'm hoping that's not okay, causing any uh, issue for you, but um... uh, th I wouldn't do that yet. Okay. We don't know how much space we'll need, and I very specifically put it put it on a point where I could just easily disassemble it. Okay. Sorry, uh, just trying to be helpful. No nothing against you. It was. It's just that I wasn't sure that this was going to actually be. No, you're fine. I'll. Uh, I'll kind of put in a, a cutting point so you can just snip it off at your will here. So, will that work? Yeah, just le just leave it secure in three places at once. I don't want to ex accidentally go and whoops, there goes half an hour of my work. Yeah. Um, Dama, I do actually have a bit of. Um... Well, I have some test results for you right now, actually. Yeah, go ahead. You were talking about um, single versus multi-piston. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, the topping out is roughly the same kind of area because of, um, well, the total power going in from the steam boilers, mm -hmm. of course. But um, here's something. Um, the single piston developed its um, RPM for the attached propeller faster. So that revved up faster for what we were trying to get it to do. Okay. Um, the propellers are currently running at... Um, about 40% strength now. Um, the twin um, piston engine developed its uh, propeller feeds slower, but it developed the actual vehicle power faster. Okay. Because um, I, I think um, the difference is actually coming down to like the uh, the mass of the um, shaft assembly. But uh, yeah, more power is available to the rest of the ship rather than like pure speed from the propeller. Okay. Um. Something that I do have that be a point of concern is that the center of mass is probably going to shift around a bit during the construction of this, so is that going to be an issue yeah, for you? Um, not really. That's why I was kind of building this thing with um, axis shifting gears in mind, so that we can gotcha. push the propels around a bit. If no, that makes perfect sense. This thing in the water. So um, I'm going to build the actual... That's good planning on your part, definitely. Years. And then we can just axis shift them if we need to move them around a few blocks. Okay. Um, I kind of want to get back to uh, Happy Ball's comment about elitism. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't consider myself an elitist. If anything, I hate elitism. Um, 
and it's not so much as having an av- an attitude of saying to get better no it's when i first came into doing these uh, this uh, video stuff for from the depths it was with an intention of trying to teach people uh, all the wisdom and knowledge that I've accumulated over p- playing this for the past five years. It wasn't an attempt to be a, an elitist jackass at all. It was to, to try to expand the player base by expanding the, the player base knowledge, if that makes sense. Am, am I making sense to you guys? Yeah. yeah Most okay. of I, I mean, if anybody's elitist in this community, it's the official Discord. Lol, do you even have a thousand hours? What? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, they can all feast That's on a mountain of dicks. Yeah, honestly, um, our little closed off section of the community is not really gone that route at all because we, we want more people in here. Basically. Yeah, we want more Hello, people in here, and uh, we're. We're happy being who we are. We like sharing our knowledge. It's not sharing knowledge is not elitist at all. It, if anything, it's it's more of a purist. Hmm. Um, a- another thing oh. is, um, honestly, you guys would say I'm a veteran of FTD, right? Yeah, like, I. I, I no, definitely. Yeah, um, but the thing is, like those people going, Ew, if you've not got like a thousand odd hours or, or something like that in this game, then it's like. Um, Actually, for a long time, when I knew most of the stuff I know now, that that was like maybe a few hundred hours in. So, my actual hours tends to be a lot lower than most people would consider when they're going, ooh, you must be this much to be an elite in this game, yada yada yada. So, yeah. yeah. I've played I, the I, game a lot, but just because I like it. So um, Nothing wrong with that. Way. Definitely nothing wrong with that. But let me put it this way, the game is so complex that you need a certain amount of time to learn the stuff. Yes. And for me, certain amount of hours are an indication, a rough indication, that you probably have a rough handle on that much stuff. Nothing yeah, more. The, the problem then becomes like, um, it's not really an elite thing that now. It's like, um, you played this long, cool, but um, what you're likely to know depends on what you've been trying to do with those hours. Yeah. And how yeah. you played. So, yeah, um, for example, I, I'm currently at, I don't know, one and a half thousand hours or something like that. Um, and I have absolutely no clue how, how to build a plane. <laughs> a lot of people don't know how to build planes, and that's perfectly yeah, fine! Yeah. I mean, I can get it to work and to fly, but make it good? That's a different topic. Well, that, then it comes down to what your definition of good is. Whether them co- that is very true. A ship of the same cost. Um, Mady, do we have any idea of where we would like to put the main guns? Do we? Are we at that kind of point at all here? I thought that, that was going to be you who okay. decides that. Yeah, but we were waiting on you getting a bow shape down before we decided that, if I recall. Uh, just, we, just we you quick, quick use one, of t- 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 one person at a time here. Yeah, you first. It's your stream. Okay. Uh, Mady, uh... Are these guns over here completed? Are they ready to go, or what's the story on them? Uh, the triple is definitely co- ready to go, ready to be fitted. The twin, I was asking you to test fire that since I can't, couldn't get it. Work myself. Okay. Server issues. What was wrong with it? Oh, it was uh, the the, uh, the shell. Control. Right, right, right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, set up the uh, shell customizer myself then because it'll probably work better if I do it on my end. Um, it most definitely will, yeah. Freaking would player. <laughs> I know, right? Um, were you go? What were you going to uh, add to uh, the discussion here, uh, Rizzo? Um, since you're working on a ship that's roughly the same size as the one I'm working on, I just gave you the quick picture of what I'm working on, so you can take a peek and maybe copy stuff that you like. Um, where'd you put it at? In uh, the in voice the chat? Random voice chat? In the random voice chat channel, yes. Okay. Okay, I got what I wanted to work out worked out. No, I don't know what I'm trying to do. Oh yeah, that is an interesting shape, Russ. Kind of a Bismarcky vibe to it, at least with the gun layout. It, I mixed a lot of World War II ships, early World War II ships, uh, into one ship. Uh, and I've, I've actually done something very similar with the casemates on my battle cruisers, so yeah. If I'm looking at this, it is similar to. I would probably. It reminds say me of my battle hymn. 
Um, Dama? Yes. South Carolina, South Where Carolina do you want... was number one, plus a couple of other ships mixed in. Uh, my opinion. I am, what were I you? Will say, I, I will say it's a generic uh, super dreadnought. Yeah, I get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe it looks, like, looks maybe a bit like a revenge, but. Yeah. There are so many different ships mixed into that. Um, any actual matchup with real life ships is just purely coincidental. Yes. Also, hello, Existence. Welcome to the chat. Hi, Existence. Hello. I came here to say something about the updates and confusion between the updates. <laughs> okay, uh, well, speak your mind. Uh, first off, uh, after they added some simple weapons, which I did not like, by the way. Uh, Are you talking about the World War II looking ones? Yes. Uh, I don't think what the FTD sh there should do, but. Uh, what, do you, what do I say? Uh, we don't need exactly World War II looking guns in this game because this is not a World War II simulation <laughs> or something. Familiar. You're starting to sound a bit uh, like Geo. Yes, I am. Uh, not the, not the. Well, yeah. Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. Uh, what do I say? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Basically, we don't need World War II looking guns because every game, every building game needs their own style of its own. We don't need World War II looking guns. We don't need World War II looking parts. We don't look, we don't need realism in a game. We don't need realistic APS guns. We don't need slow APS guns. We don't need these because this is a game. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah, the sentiment um, makes sense. I'm not agreeing with the statement itself. Okay. Yeah, especially there, there was a, those guns have actually proven popular when they were added. So there are people that want them. Um, my thought would be it'd be better if like you could give like a couple of skins to those guns. Yeah, so, so, than something of restricted it... to looking that way, especially so, the ones with the seats in. Like um, you could say, I want this gun. It's got these stats, but um, I can choose to have like this enclosed ball to it rather than like an open air one with mm -hmm. a seat on the side. Yeah. So, just an option. Uh, also, the reason I played FTD was to build some World War II ships. Yes, I am a realistic builder. Yes, I build realistic ships. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to have realistic guns in this game. Because building something realistic in a game for fun, which doesn't have these parts, is cooler. It's basically cooler why it's cooler because game is not designed for these users game is designed to have some sci-fi stuff i don't know yeah it's it's like a mix of almost like several genres i mean you kind of got some steampunk you got some sci-fi you got diesel punk you got all kinds of styles in this it's not cooler to build world war two ships anymore anyway, because everyone builds world war two ships <laughs> you make a very good point a lot of people use that style i myself have guilty of that so uh, yeah i'm not because i'm just suck at building steps realistically so <laughs> there you go <laughs> this is exactly why i build near future i absolutely hate the fact that everybody builds world war ii and if you take a look at most of my designs i try to incorporate them looking a bit futuristic like what the sci hell uh not sci-fi can i can i uh, read us some uh, things that uh, happy ball's been talking about in chat here real quick Go for it. Uh, Happy Ball says, um, teach newbies how to play doesn't know Lua. <laughs> Just kidding, not making fun of you. A lot of people don't know Lua, if I'm to be fair, so. Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. no, I, I get what, I kind of get what he's saying. I mean, I'm not a 100% expert on everything in the game. A lot of things, probably, but when it comes to uh, using Lua, AC. ACBs and um, especially breadboard. I am not very knowledgeable in those areas. I'll be the first one to admit it. So uh, the last thing he says uh, is just a game. It doesn't not have to make sense. The rant. Yeah, that's uh, 
I I hundred percent agree with that. It's just a freaking game, people. It. I actually disagree with that. To oh. me, the game has to make sense within its own logic. Yes. Oh yeah, that's the point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It has to be true to itself. Is that a, better, a fair way to say yes. that? Yes. Yes. And. And original, please. Originality yeah, is hell. important. But um, actually, um, I'm going to have to disagree with you there, sadly. Oh, why? Because um, this is something that's actually been happening again in general games industry research. It's like um, people hit out of the game for quote unquote not being new, original, fresh, yada yada yada, right? Uh, what I mean but, is. But. Um, but the thing is that sales figures actually show that these um, new games that really try to go out of their way and try something new or different, like people complain that games don't do, they actually tend to do very badly, or, you know, they, they, they suffer they, they from are, the actual they, sales point of view, so... They are controversial, at least that. Yeah, so... Look at Death Stranding, and... Just, just something being different or new or whatever isn't actually good. Something being original mm -hmm. isn't necessarily good. Uh, what I mean is, like, uh, being original about a simple weapon rather than copying a World War II gun in a mesh from... I, abs I absolutely disagree with that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> go, go on. Um, for two simple reasons. One, yes. I don't like the concept of simple weapons in FTD at all. I, I, I think they have their place. I, I think they have okay. their place because we don't have an alternative. But in yes, my opinion, uh... the key aspect in FTD is creating your own stuff. And having essentially a prepackaged uh, option to choose that you can't customize goes against that spirit. Um, yes, yes, that yes, makes yes, sense. Yeah. Is that coming down on the line that um, the simple weapons are too good, Raz? Um, there's there's so many aspects to it. I, I generally mean that simple weapons should be replaced by some kind of downsized customization system for tiny weapon systems. Hmm. Kind of micro, um, micro I, I, APS I, I, uh, kit. I, I, I expected, I expected Rhea's gun design will be that to, uh, alternative to the APS guns, but I think that gun will never arrive at this point. <laughs> That's one part. The other part is, um, if we have something like some weapons, yes. then I think the ones we actually do have are among the best options available for them. Yes, they are not something new and futuristic, or whatever, but they are good, solid, reliable op options. I would appreciate if we had uh, an unmanned version available for some of them, so that we are not essentially forced to cons consider our ships to be crude, because quite yes. frankly, our, our own character as a robot and yes. the AIs, crude guns kind of don't make sense for the game. So it simply removes yes. the chance, and I'm happy. So. Let me ask this question to you guys, and, and I, I think this is a very important question that needs to be asked, but no one seems to have addressed. Um, right. As in current, do you feel that the simple weapons are contributing to this dumbing down factor that I brought up? Yes, they are. Yeah. I don't think there's a generally good answer to that one. Because um, I was... Trying to find and figure out how to get this in edgewise, mm -hmm. but people are still setting their own opinions. So you know, you know my usual problem. No, you're um, fine. My opinion is there should be simple weapons. Maybe I know that. Well, Rat says that he doesn't really like them. That's fair. That's fine. Um, but um, it's like I think they should be there, but they should be useful to a point. But really, they're like. Um, it's more like um, it lets people get into the game more easily. It gives them something they can use or bolt on when they're not quite sure what to do or what to try. So maybe they but should just if be. They want something that's, if they want something that's truly effective or more efficient or whatever, then then they have to start to learn how to make their own design rather than relying on simple weapons because they only go so far. So I think I like the, that um, octet AA gun might actually be too powerful for this definition of, of simple weapons because it is frankly a really good early gun and it actually outweighs some of the designs you can do yourself in, in, within yeah. a reasonable time scale. Does that make any sense or am I just talking out, it, out of my behind? It's even worse. It's even worse. Uh, the simple weapons currently for the volume and cost they have outperform any other system. Yes. A bit of a 
contention ion, and I will say yep. this out instead of actually making a fuel engine. Like if that was a simpler thing, once I got bored with the RTGs, I went and scoured the fucking workshop. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going to say it straight up. I people who don't know how to build it and aren't interested at that point in learning because there's so much fucking stuff to do will go and scour the workshop for anything they can find well yeah that's how people get most of their engines i mean that's where i yeah. get my engines is from the workshop yeah i know Razul. Okay. that's where he gets his engines from and i am mark three he's perfectly content I, with I, building I, his I'm, own I'm, I'm a complete club and i just build my own yes yes there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> But I, I want to at least have the options, and yeah, um, that, that, yeah. I think that's I, I want I, I love the option being there. Yeah, I just wonder about how it's being implemented as an option. Just I, I, as one thing though with FTD community, I basically got I basically got to the guys I play games with now through FTD. That's why I love the game and I want it to be successful because. There is just something to it which requires you. Like, for example, if you see somebody doing some stupid shit, you, you sometimes want to go, "Hey, you may want to look at, look at this to build a bit better." How is Darkhead doing, by the way? Well, he's frustrated because he's been because he has been on the film festival and he hasn't slept for the last two bloody days. So <laughs> he's probably sleep deprived at this point. Uh... Can't see Okay, I just was kind of curious. I haven't heard from him in quite some time. Yeah, but but he he's been pulling his air out at what FTD has become. Yeah, a lot of people I think are lamenting on that, but uh, no one seems to want have a solution. <laughs> it's not really so much have a solution. It's just like no one seems to want to air these grievances out. We're in a place where well, people will listen honest, um, well, that, that, yeah that, that's that's the issue though it's like we don't really have a place where people will listen that well to it and that's most of the time i don't know if you guys been seeing those links that i've been uh, putting in um the discord about uh arch talking about review bombing and that seems like the only recourse that we would really have at least in my humble opinion <laughs> yeah but then that that's the nuclear option because remember we were spitballing yeah. about things previously, and it's like that was um, that, that was that made me so uncomfortable. I, I stopped participating in that particular conversation <sighs> completely. Uh, Which I can I can understand that. It just sometimes I feel like that's yeah. one of the few options that we have left where we have any real particular say, and it's sad to come uh, to that. What? I think you're be I think you're being ignorant of some of the things that he has done, such it's as. That. Nothing more. There is a worse nuclear option, and that's... And that's... Hello, Steam. Look at this game. It has broken the rules. And I don't want to do that. This um, game which is... It He's talking about... Um... I, if... If it's... Oh, oh wait, the, the, the pay for reviews thing? <laughs> yeah. The... No, the begging... Um, remember how uh, they were uh, the uh, road to release? I think is what Media is talking about, or at least exactly. And they no, th 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 those change. You can't really hold it. Um, I just laughed. Sorry there, yeah. because I just deleted a section of the uh, upper deck, and it turned into computer AI cards. Uh oh, <laughs> something is broken in the in this. Uh, like... What are you talking Let's about? Um, I deleted the blocks, and rather than seeing the the blocks that they were falling away, they, uh -huh. um, it, they turned into computer um, AI cards. Oh, yeah. And then those fell away dead. Okay, so, well. So it's like a dead block. They aren't doesn't seem to be getting the correct block um, appearance. Hmm. Net coding. They, I don't know I if mean, that's net coding. It's, I've only noticed it in this particular session with Dama. Really? Oh, it's it's. Yeah, I, I don't recall seeing that before. It is definitely net coding. Like, they've been switching Unity versions like crazy, and there are some as remnants of old code, I believe. Oh, you installed the um, Barbet stammer? Yes, 
Uh, I, you that said you. The rearmost one? I think that's going to be the rearmost one. Yes. Is that gonna okay. is that gonna give you enough room to work with or? Uh, well, that's where the, the um, boilers and pistons were before. Um, oh, I was just looking at that thing. Uh, if we want faster reaction speed, we actually want more space mm -hmm. because of um, getting more reduction gears in, and the big, huge system requires a lot of reduction gears. So that is far less space than I thought I'd have to work with. Mm. Um, I mean, that, then that is me, who's successfully been kind of adding the bow to the ship. Uh, what if but we... I... Well, you, you don't have, like, a big internal system that um, needs to go into that area, though. Uh, you can actually play something in it. You could. I could even in tell Dama just go and place the lambs there, because it's... Yeah, that's kind of what I had in mind, was sticking the lambs in there, and uh, there would be enough you know, room for another turret in there. Now, um, the the issue, matey, is um, where Dama wants to put the rear the rearmost turrets doesn't yeah. leave that much space for a heavy duty steam system. Um, um well, I, 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 I can fit a steam system in this area. I just need it, to check and see how effective it's going to be. If you uh, want to scale it back to like uh, using large instead of huge, I'd be perfectly fine with that. In fact, you know what? I think I want a Bismarck it now. <laughs> I'm going to Bismarck this thing. Yes. Okay. Three propellers into it. Don't <laughs> three, three, three propellers this thing shall have. It shall be the Bismarck Mark II. Um, Happy Ball said, I get the feeling he doesn't like a plate armor blocks either. I have no idea who he's referring to as he, but... Uh, uh, yeah, um, gotta remember there are three pillars in here, so... Uh... Uh, well, yeah, I think stepping back to a smaller team for including team, existence. So I'm going to look at that. So, uh, right. Actually, no. There's five people in here. No, yeah, well, there's five people in the chat. There's three people in the build. If he's commenting on something in the build, then it's one of three. If he's commenting on someone in the chat, it's one of five. Uh, we are not born. <laughs> We're not going to assume that. Damn, I think. The bow only has one mimic, but I think it looks damn good already. So okay, let work. me detach my camera so I can come take a look. See. Oh yeah, I like what you do with the bulbous bow. That's pretty cool. That that's standard on most on all of my ships. I just have to put the ninety that's stone out of somewhere. Cool. Yeah, I think I can roll with that. The only issue is the set the section where the bow slightly transforms because, as you can see, exactly. I'm assuming you're gonna uh, bring this back probably about maybe twenty some odd meters, or is that your final resting place for it? Depends on where you need it. I have already said, I have already said so. There is an. As long as you manage to fit the turrets, I don't care where this entire section goes. That's why I put I okay. it to be really removed. Okay. Although, at this point, I'm almost concerned that when we cut off the section, the entire rest of the ship sinks, and this thing is the only thing left standing. Because it's so large. Yeah. That could happen. How about you so, save the build real quick, just in case? <laughs> that might be a good yeah, option. I was going to ask how, how recently it's been saved. Actually, I don't think it's ever been saved, if I'm to be honest. Actually, yeah, uh, that's the point. It hasn't. Don't, <laughs> don't go and save it immediately. So, yeah, I'll... Uh, one sec here. So, let me ask you guys this, then. Um... If you had to classify this ship, what would you classify it as? Uh, Ion, could you do me a favor and zoom out a bit so we can actually see the full, uh, the full ship for a moment? Done. It should be on stream in like 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. There um, is a delay, yeah. <laughs> I love having three screens, but... Um... <laughs> No, yeah, everyone's That's in close way. building stuff, so yeah. But when I first came in, you, you were kind of showing a lot of the rear, mm -hmm. and it's kind of yeah, huge. That, that, 
that, that's that's the area that I was working on though. So um, yeah. Yeah, and that's just the radio of the ship. Well, um, it was meant. Dan was thinking he wanted it at 150 meters. Uh, it is 192. <laughs> damn it, matey. Yeah. Um, that's at mo at least a pocket battleship, in my opinion. At uh, least I would probably call it a full-out battleship. I, I, <laughs> Mason, I, I, I would. I would. I would call, call it probably a battle cruiser. But I mean, the armor seems a little on the thick side for it to be a battle cruiser, but. I don't know. Well, I say, I say, fast battleship. Fast battleship? I I can. Yeah, yeah that's the point. Yeah. Uh, I might yeah, be able to roll with that. Definitely. Bear, bear in mind, I've actually downgraded the size of the propellers. Oh, yeah, that's fine. A, down system. Definitely. Um, a which point, doesn't look as good, honestly. I mean, definitely a point, but you have to remember that fucking that bloody Vanguard was at one point called a battle cruiser by the Admiralty. And Vanguard yeah, had a 15 inch belt. That is a bit confusing. Battle cruiser design and the fast battleship design are similar a bit. And it's saying no. here there's something going on here with the uh, the force output is scaled to like 6.7. Uh, what? what are you looking at? I'm looking at the propellers. Uh, the the well, outermost ones, it's saying uh, due to placement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's because of. Those are the three by threes, and right now that actually gets is interfered with by the metal behind it. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I yeah, that, that's why that was. But, I, I um, see it. it. Yeah, it's this like four meter slope right here. Exactly. Yeah, that wasn't a okay. problem with even a five by five would be fine in that spot. Okay. It's just the three by three is a little bit too small. I just didn't know if you you were aware of it or not. That's why I was putting it out. So I, I was not actually. So yeah, that is um something to keep in mind. Thanks. Um, my issue is I'm trying to work out getting the steam system working at a good acceleration rate and for power output as well so my thought is um, since I'm downgrading the size of the steam system more propellers to allow it to operate more effectively with um, a smaller um, piston system I actually think that the small propellers look kind of anemic for the ship yeah that's the thing it looks so much better when it was using the huge system actually so, um, would that, that's you what I'm trying to work out. Me bringing what I class as a battle cruiser just for comparison. Um, what was originally was built with? Okay. Well, you had it in earlier. I mean, sure, if you want to go ahead and do that, I don't care. Yeah, I think I will. But okay, bow's almost complete. You just need to fill in some sections, and it will be fine. Okay, let's try and fit this in. And uh, it's more like the width of the ship now. I mean, uh, it looks almost like one of one of the insanities that Japan was trying to build as the Imatos, but yeah, then when you when you see what I consider a battle cruiser that that cost. Mm-hmm. Whoa, leg spike. Yeah, um that was that was something big coming in. Oh, yep, yeah, that's something. Oh, it's the ship from earlier, but the, this game has been running for a while now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a battle cruiser, definitely. Although this this thing is mostly made so large, so long, just because I didn't want to you get the Citadel above the waterline, so I traded, traded a bit of the cost savings and weight to get a far bit, to get the ship a bit more of it aesthetically pleasing. I mean, the armament will be similar, actually, since what you'll have is basically two of my main... Yeah, you'll have a slightly worse main battery, I would say. So, a battle cruiser, definitely. Maybe you yeah. can, cla you can um... class it as a large cruiser, but that's... <laughs> Well, then basically it... call, calling a Congo a large cruiser at, mm. at the outbreak of the Second World War, and frankly, it almost was. Sorry, guys, I'm going back up to a treble prop. Okay. Um, and to readjust the steam, um, sorry, the um, propeller height, we're going to have to shift the entire steam section now because there just isn't space. Hmm. Actually, the, this thing is five shorter. The ship we are working on. 
The, the thing I was gonna I was gonna ask actually, you know that big open area that's not covered by decking and hull, is that meant to be there, matey, as part of your bow, or is that can the entire hull section be shifted back to reduce the length of the ship? You you could reduce it. I don't have a problem with it since Yeah, um that then that's a question for Dama then if he wants to get this thing. Actually, to yeah, to I thing. was uh thinking can I, I could probably live with like maybe one seventy ish, so if we could knock off about maybe twenty meters and just pull that back that would probably work out I'm just trying to I just mm. need to um, I, I, I don't want to knock any of the stern off it because I, I'm running short on space as it is now hmm. to build an effective steam system okay just a question Dama would you mind switching the twin turret for the triple since the triple I think I have some shells somewhere, but I'd, I'd have to find them. Actually, Since... you're kind of giving me an idea, matey. Uh, just if anybody's willing to give my idea a shot, just Google G Giulio Cesare, World War II. Well, no, no, the idea that I'm having is... Um... What if there was a way that we could try routing uh, the... Um... The steam system, like, under a turret. We could do... That would be lifting the turret. Um, it would also... The, um, then the, <laughs> the big restriction becomes the fact that the axis shifting gears have to be before the uh, reduction gears. Well, something that I was experimenting with before uh, you guys came along earlier today was uh, I was thinking of what it would be like running the uh, shaft underneath a turret. So, I'm wondering can, if we there's could... No problem, there's no problem moving the boiler system deeper into the ship. Um, yeah. That's easy. You actually have to run it under two turrets, since remember there is going to be a bottom triple and above it a twin, which is the same size. Well... Alright, so... Anyways, I'll leave you for now. I'll probably just take... I'll see if I can't take this thing. Oh, I can't take it out. Of okay. Wonderful. So this thing, this thing, unless you decide to despawn it, will be looming here with the option of Dama stealing all of the guns he wants. Just I'm glad you think so highly of me. God. <laughs> No, I mean those. I second... do remember a certain person using my missiles. <laughs> <laughs> I give you credit for him every time, system. though. And my anti-missile system as well. I mean, I mean. That was a regular little pirate. You are. I mean, the second. If you take a look at the secondary systems on that ship, though, they would pretty much fit right in. Well, I, here's what I'm thinking for the rear battery is, um, I'm thinking we could have like the 8 meter ones up front and 6 meter ones towards the rear, so then that way you, know, you could run, um, uh, shafts underneath the turret. What do you think of that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you're talking where, so what was, can you repeat that please? Well, I was thinking, the, um, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I had done was... That leaves have, you, you just only leave? two meters, so you still have to push it down. I'm sorry for the noise in the back now. Oh, that's fine. I got to hear what you said there, matey. Here's what I'm still thinking. Me, right. Still means you only have two meters space, so you'd have to move them down. I'm gonna pop the turret out of there for a moment. I just let me uh, test uh, something out. Yeah, remove the turret's fine, but we need to know where the barbette is. The barbette's probably gonna be in the same spot, but just yeah, are you thinking of lifting the turret slightly? Yes, because that will help a lot. Yes, I am thinking uh, we can lift the turret. Uh, well, not necessarily yeah. lift the turret. I'm just thinking, what if we just put in one that used shorter autoloaders, and I already have a turret that's ready to go that would fit in there just fine. Well, um, here's the issue with the space available. Um, the reduction gear, you deleted that reduction gear, didn't you? 
I didn't delete anything as okay, far as the, the uh, Steam right. stuff goes. The thing that the thing that must stay in for the Steam stuff is the reduction gears must stay where they are. They've got to be um, attached to the propeller shaft section. Mm -hmm. But the piston section here can be moved if we use the axis shifts to change the height of the That's what I had in mind. Yeah, so that's the bit that can go under. I, I was almost considering just pulling the turrets inwards. You just need the AI and this probably good length for the entire ship. Because I began with the, with the intention of placing the forward turret. Let me just grab it. Let's see, in the space available before that barbette, um, we could basically get it down to the level of this um, lower deck plate down here. That, that's that's about as far down as I go. it can go, I think, before it hits the barbette, but I don't know where the barbette is because you deleted all of it. Yeah, I'm grabbing a new one. <laughs> so, um, Rita, I mean, Rita ships, and even the ship I'm currently working on, um, they on, their turrets don't go from the top to the bottom. They stop about two thirds down the, down the way, and then the armor surge comes. For that hurt. So, I see no reason why you couldn't do that in FTD as well. Yeah, um, well, the, the issue is the size of the guns are, is already set for being planned as well, so. Yeah, th th that, yeah that gets underneath the barbet. Damn it, just it would need. Front, you could just shift the entire turret because the forward triple, which I just spawned in for. Looking at at least where I would envisage it, of course, the, the mantlets will be spread out a bit more. Uh, why is there uh, ammo under this area? I put it there. Right underneath the steam system. Okay. <laughs> just move the, just move the entire bar bed. That was my, that was more of my idea. Because well, um... if you take a look at la how large this system is, how much more space would you need for an efi efficient one? Um, the, well, for, for the efficiency, in for direct propeller drive, actually it's more... F um, well, the ramp up is also a factor. Um, yeah, just... Oh, I know why I'm deleting that, never mind. Um, what's going on is the fact that um, for a faster ramp up time, we need to have more reduction gears, so that actually does reduce the efficiency of it. So um, it's, it becomes a trade-off at that point, how quickly we want the, the propellers to actually spin up. Okay, I think I know what I'll be doing now then. Because... And that's also the fact that the big, a bigger system also reacts more slowly anyway. So then that's also that's also an issue with this thing having to thread itself under the turret. It's yeah. going to have a massive engine shaft. It's going to generate, generate more reliable engine power. But it will take longer to spin up as well, so we'd need to consider that in terms of boiler space. Dama, is there any real need to have anything be to, to have anything behind the engine section, or can you just place it in front with a given space? If you just imagine a second seven, nine by nine turret. Wait, what now? Yeah, th we're we're back in the old problem of like too many people working on a given area at once, so p everyone's getting a bit confused. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm explain thinking... this to me one more time, Media. I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I I'm trying to visualize this. I'm having a little trouble I'm, here. I'm thinking of a lazy solution of just letting Ion have his space, because if we place the turrets closer to amidships, there is enough area. Okay, so area what about the lamp system? Where is that going to go? You did just place in the bow, just look at how much bloody space that is. Yeah, but the bow is going to be collapsed in about 20 meters, remember? We don't have to do that, because then we get all of the space we need. We don't have to work with complicated solutions, which should reduce firepower. In addition, directly above the steam system, above the reduction gears and so on, there's enough space for lamps. Or five. That is true. Yeah. That, that's also something we could do. I, I was thinking with placing the twin turret to place it here, and then you need about about five meters from it just for some extra space, four to five meters, to place the second turret. So if you take a look, I can probably I would be willing to place the second turret. Okay. 
here. If you see what I mean. No, no, that that works. Back. That works. Yeah, we can run with that. Okay. Wait. So just to remove the barbet completely, and Ion gets his space. Okay. <laughs> well, Damo is the one in charge, so yeah. Um. This is not quite as narrow as it has to be. This, I've actually narrowed it slightly, so there's less of a vulnerable area because of the engine shafts under the turrets. But it would need to be like... Um, I need to, some more shifting gears to spread it out slightly at the other end, wherever okay. that winds up. Um, maybe... But I've, I've worked that into the space under the turrets, actually, by taking up part of the deck plate. How much space do you think the turrets are going to need as far as um, between each other? There's no real need to have a space. I mean, you could potentially put some supplies there, fuel, for example. But I will, as a rule of thumb, with these turrets, twin turret cap at the top can be relatively small. So maybe four to five meters, as I was saying. Okay. So let's be a bit conservative on that and say that the next one starts here. Which is five meters away, which then means if I do nine meters, and there long, shouldn't be any issue with it being tucked up against the engine like that because they're not going to explode anyway because of ejectors. So we're good there. If you take a look, it basically fits that we give him eleven meters of extra space. And do you think you can work in that? Am I him now? Is that what's going on? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm asking if I am him. <laughs> and, uh, okay. By that time, by the way, I'm, I'm making a powerful skills reference. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, it needs to hmm? It needs to go rich. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, is no, that going to give you enough space to work with? Like, I guess is what I'm trying to find out here. Up to the end of the bar bed, which which is kind of the place. Well, I need a seven meter space to actually install the pistons. Uh, an engine section, then any re remaining space will be oil oh. space, which I can Let allocate me to the, to the places with uh, piping. Get this uh, barbette out of here. And I uh, just uh, paint something. Th that's the thing, remember, there's a need boiler space as well. So but, that's um, the end I need. I I'd ask for something like, like nine meters, is probably the minimum I can try and do something with. So, the three colored beams which border the engine shaft are. Where'd the your... go? I got rid of it because it was in your way. Um, no, 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 that, that was fine actually. You can see I've run the the pipes, sorry, the pipes, uh, the drive shaft underneath it. <laughs> so, that was actually perfect position if that was where you were going to keep it. Well, what Mady was saying is uh, we can uh, butt the, uh, the main guns up against the engine here and that would give you loads of space and we'd have room to put lambs on top of it. Also, now we're trying to remove the need for the entire um, shifting the axis down. Yes. In the first place. That was what I was trying to do the entire time. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> this is about par for the course, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, this is par for the course. Okay, um, if Dama, can you show me where you want the rear barbette now, please? I'm already building it. So, about there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. that, that without needing to shift the axis so drastically like that, yeah, that is tons of space. So, is that going to be adequate for what you need it to do? Uh, yeah. Okay. We're still in the case of needing to shift the entire steam system, more or less, depending on how we want to adjust the propeller height, but uh, that's okay. I can build a more effective system if you give me that. Let's give me that. That's, space. yeah, that that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's an extra, like, 12 or so meters. Oops. That, yeah, that's very much what I needed. 11 meters. Yeah, I, I, I was just spitballing it because um, I wasn't quite sure how far it was. But yeah, 11 meters, plenty. I could even get in some extra reduction gears if we, if we want more efficient uh, acceleration. Yeah, uh, the more the merrier, I think, as far as the reduction gears go. Yeah, remember, it's like... Um, I know there's... Made off less less um, efficiency in terms of steam to motivation power, but the propellers react a lot faster. Also, I believe there there is a diminishing returns once you get past about five of them. That's when the yeah, diminishing is, returns yeah. kind of comes into play. No way we're going to fit five of these in plus everything else. Well, not with that attitude. 
No, that, the huge ones literally <laughs> are too big. I mean, they're four meters long each. So um, if we do that, there just won't be space for actually the, the pistons and the main engine block themselves. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, do we want? To, do I still want to have space for reduction gear shifting? So, or as I just dedicate everything to making the most effective um, accelerating engine I can. Um. To be honest, I would rather go with efficiency over effect. Yes. That would be a single reduction gear engine then. Really? Yeah. Remember, more reduction gears make, makes the system less efficient. Huh. But it. it I thought it made it more efficient. Effect. No, it's um, the propellers spin up faster, but the system as a whole becomes less efficient. Hmm. Maybe somewhere about midway then. Uh, yeah, so like two, maybe three. That would be about midway. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I really don't know a whole lot about steam. So, um, think about it this way: the reason they get less efficient is because they're adding mass to the system. Less mass makes right. It more no, that makes perfect sense. That that's why um, when I was experimenting with twin piston versus one piston, mm -hmm. the one piston could accelerate better because it had less mass to bring up to speed. Yeah. But the um, the other one, because it had the extra mass, it provided more engine power because it, there was more drain you could put on it before it would start to slow down. Did that I... not did that not get across at all? I <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I am not very okay. familiar with um, Steam, so I'm w one last try. Uh, what's um, what's set in motion stays in motion. Yes. So, would you have an easier time stopping a, a car or a bus going at the same speed? You're ma you're making sense now. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's what it is. An means. object in motion <laughs> will stay in motion unless it's acted upon by another object, right? Bingo. But also it force, but yeah. Well, yeah. It's, um, so yeah, think of that as like um, that's how steam engines react if the vehicle is demanding power from them. Maybe where the hell did the are those the guns that you were working on? Now that we've been thoroughly yeah. sidetracked. Okay. <laughs> I just wonder because that seems like it's a whole different diameter than the... Okay. Never mind. Uh, I'm going to... Shall I leave space for two axis shifting gears if we need them? Just in case, yeah. Planning yeah, ahead could potentially be a good thing, yeah. yes. Yes. I have to go. I may be able to come back for the, like five to ten minutes, but I still have to do something. Okay. And uh, that's this is roughly the system space as it stands right now. If I put the propeller systems in in this height, does that look good to you, Dama? Hold on, let me see here. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Or would you like me to move it two meters further back and make it um, a little bit narrower? So there wouldn't be that block of clearance between the pistons? I think it'll be that okay. Okay, so leave it like that. Yeah. Okay, that means just um, boiler space needs to be added now. Um, are you planning to move the bar bet back a bit closer, or are you going to leave it where you, you've put it? Um, I think it's going to stay. Okay, right, then that means I can use the remaining space for boiler space. So, yeah. We, we got there in the end, didn't we? Yeah. In the end, we did. Admittedly, it took us a while, but hey, steam systems can't take a while to calibrate, so hey. Mm, that and do? everyone wants to talk at once, that doesn't necessarily help matters, but whatever. And, and everyone, everyone's like throwing different ideas at the same problem as well. That didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> we, we still need to work out on um, coordinating if we're doing a multiplayer build. <laughs> I really think we do.
It wasn't a dig at you, Dama, by the way. It's just like no, no, no. I know nice. what you. I know. I know what you mean. Then again, I. Ain't, I never really. I always had, have kind of hard time seeing myself as a leader, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I I know why I kind of am, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just a confidence thing. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Um, I think the most effective way to do this would actually be large boilers at this point. Since that's fits into the existing style. Uh... Those yeah. are some huge pistons. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's one of the things with the huge system. It, it lives up to its name. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I mean, I would love to install some huge boilers onto this thing, but they wouldn't quite fit with the width of ship we've got. So I'm going to have to work <laughs> around that. Yeah, but so it's much easier yeah. to just fit in large boiler systems instead. What kind of burn yeah, rate do you think we can expect on that? Just out of curiosity. What, what? what kind of burn rate? Kind of whatever we set it to. Or are you talking about full power? Um. Well, let's say I wanted to get up to like, I don't know, 25 to 30 meters a second. Um. Well, I couldn't test that properly earlier because the ship's hull wasn't complete and it doesn't float, so... Okay. Yeah, there, there were a few issues with actually working that out. Um, so sadly, it's something that we can't properly test until we get to like um, the ship is more complete, and then we can just turn no, down that, the you, burn rate. No, you're, you're, you're making a fair point. Again, I, I um, just had to uh, profess my ignorance of using the steam system. So yeah. Well, the full speed the steam system can do is 160, but I don't think we're aiming for that. No, God, no. <laughs> we would be burning through like the entire ship's worth of material. This would be better in current version. Let me put it this way: it would I, be I, far I, better I, than for sure. Heresy. I and know that's heresy, but in current version, this would be a much better ship. I, Sorry, um, engine setup. Oh, I because know. Because this version doesn't have the efficiency bonus. I know. That, um, current version has. I am fully aware with it, of this, but uh, I have a fairly substantial war chest in my. Uh, Let's play right now. I think over a mil million materials. But, but, yeah, it's, it, I, I can use ATB control to regulate um, things to a certain extent. So, mm -hmm. um, can't, can't the boiler yeah. auto regulate by now? No, not in this version. Ah, okay. It can in current. Yeah, but we're in um, 2.4.9, I, I think it is. Yes. In some non code, yes. <laughs> um. But yeah, th this version does not have the auto-regulate system. Yeah. At full throttle, this thing would be using 11.4 per second with that boiler size. The question becomes, how well does the propeller respond to that system? So let's crank it up and find out. Oh, it's not attached. Oh, I've got something backwards in here somewhere. Don't you uh, hate it when that engine, shit happens? Engine, 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 uh, engine shaft, da, 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 engine shaft. That's the problem, right? So I unshafted himself. Yes. <laughs> not connected properly. You are not the two meter. You're the one meter, so you're a two meter. Okay, propeller spinning. You're a two meter. Um, what's it doing right now? Right now it's operating at 110,000 force and it's still ramping up. Mm. The propeller's only operating at just over, about 12% at the moment. But it's still accelerating, so... Yeah, that, that's the big problem though. It's um, like burn... The, the burn efficiency is... What? Burn efficiency? Yeah. Words. It takes time to come up to its potential speed. Yep. So we're we experimenting with steam as well. We have to lowball it though, because that's the fact that the ship will draw power from the steam engine while it's actually in operation. Let's double this thing up. The problem I had when I was trying uh, out steam props, at least just short if something together, was uh, 9 .9, I, could get the, I could get the power for the propellers just fine. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get the rotation speed for the propellers. Um, you, the rot rotation speed comes more easily with more reduction gear. So just slap on more. <laughs> more reduction gear. Um, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier with Dammer. Um, the reduction gears allow the propeller to spin up more rapidly. 
Um, but they also reduce the efficiency of the system. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yep, that's already ramping up faster because I've almost doubled the, the boiler space on it. Engine power is skyrocketing. Um, yes. Uh, currently, this is running at around 25 RPM. That's 20,000 odd force being applied. How does that compare to a, a, an existing large prop? Ooh. Pardon? What's going on, Raz? So what do you, what do you a huge prop has a max force of 3000. Yeah, so it's, it's already multiple times above that one. <laughs> right now it's at 25. And accelerating still. <laughs> Though I think, honestly, this is probably the reasonable point to expect it to get to in short order. Like, um... Uh, approaching like um, 25 percent effect. I, I just wish that we could actually take. We had an engine which would dedicate all power output to the propellers, rather than being a split system like it is at the moment. That'd be a nice addition. Yeah. A gearbox that boots all power to the attached propeller, rather than dedicating a whole bunch well, of. Simply not, simply not needing the, gear, the gearbox. I, I don't mind the reduction gears and things, but it's like um. No, I mean the gearbox, not the reduction system, just the gearbox. If you well, have the gearbox, the gearbox is, is, it splits, it's, but if you don't need the gearbox, then whatever. Well, the gearbox is like um, think of it as like the multi-purpose laser core. So it's the it's the key chunk of the system. I, so. know, I know that's how the system currently works, but if mm. we didn't need it, and then it would, would uh, dedicate it to the uh, propeller instead of splitting it. Hmm. That would be fun. That would be nice. Raz, are you... Raz, sorry. Um, Dama? Yes? Are you okay with 60 resources per second? For full power? Um, that's... Or would that not be that, that's not that much. You probably spend more on repairs in most battles. I mean, if, if, you, if you just count this fuel, it's 600 fuel a second. Which is mm. roughly a single ruby. Yeah, but keep in mind you have refineries that operate significantly better yeah. than 10 to 1. And that's running at full tilt, I'm assuming? One of them is running at full tilt at the moment. Yeah, the central prop is running flat out and it's still building speed because it takes time to do that. Yeah. Um. So, I'll just... I'm I'll just thinking just of getting, like, the... Um... The second boiler is probably just going to be for pre pre ignition, so it's like. What well, about fifty percent of that? Fifty percent? Mm -hmm. You mean like have one boiler running? Yeah, just out of curiosity here. Uh, this will probably simulate a pre burn. Like, um, if we shut off the uh, secondary boiler now, like a minute or so into activation, then it is. Yeah, it can't maintain its current output, so it's dropping. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much engine power is it operating at? Uh, I'm not sure where it's going to stop, but yeah. Right now it's on one boiler, so it's spooling down. Just because the pressure's dropping. I mean, but honestly, 60 materials per second is not that much. How many ARM processors uh, do you usually have? 20? 30? That's, uh, that's easily more. Or as much. Yeah, we're, we're at like a 20,000 power output raw. And we still have no idea how fast it's going to be going with these. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, not no. Make, that's, sorry, that's make, not make it, um, add balloons until it floats and try it out. 20,000 drops to 10,000 potential for the piping. It's either 10,000 sustained or 5,000 sustained on the crankshaft itself. Uh, okay, just one thing. I've placed all of the turrets in spots where I believe they would probably go. Mm -hmm. So now you can start building around that. Even if you shorten it by the 20 or so meters, there is enough space. Just wanted to add that in. Um, want... Okay. 
if you if you take a look, I think we're operating at about twenty percent effect so, on a single boiler. Um, just, just to explain for mm -hmm. a bit, you always have the triple turret down the bottom, which is the spamier again, the one that you would probably use the middle turret for disruptors, mm -hmm. and potentially then have one of the guns as HE, some sort of hollow point, or hash slash heat, and then one frag spam, depending on what you want. And then the top guns are uh, the heavy armor busters. So you basically have two different APS types, and ev even if the enemy is at the front or at the back, you can use the advantages of both. Okay. Anyways, I'll have to go for now, so see you later. Okay. Um, you. Actually, I'll probably have to be going in about an hour myself. I got an appointment, but... Um... Um, yeah. I could still go till then, so... Yeah, it's stabilizing somewhere around 20% um, of max RPM on the propellers. And that's at 50% power? Yeah, that, that's with just one boiler running on each of the uh, um, assemblies. Just okay. So that's 30 as, material per second? Just as a small note, Dama? Yes. Maybe it would be worth it to just have the 3x3 three three for the turret protection, since that means you don't have any spots the any tunnels the aging can go to the turret through. Are oh, you talking about me armoring it up? Yeah. That's one thing I noticed that the three by three seems to do quite well even though it's not protected from the side. Okay. Especially if you then have an overhanging turret cap. Which the lower turrets will have, and well, I usually go with a with like a five by five neck. I I do a three by three neck just because it's more convenient, and you can do even a quad like that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'll be gone for now, and okay. if you fan fancy doing something later, maybe after we finish this thing, you could help me fix up my battle cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you could see, it's almost funny finished. It just needs some of the finishing touches done. Okay. So, see you later. Alright, take care, matey. Right, see you later, matey. Alright. Um, is the front section actually watertight now nowadays, or is it still... Mm, no, it's not watertight at all. Uh, if you want to go ahead and plug it up and give her a test drive, that's f fine, but... Yeah, that's what I was wondering, because um, I'm currently sealing the rear section. Okay. So we, we're almost at the point where we can um, pressurize the hole. Which makes it sound like a submarine, I know, but it's like... The terminology still applies, so... <laughs> Besides, we do kind of want to check its floating floating characteristics anyway, so I think it's going to seek like a stone. Quite likely. It's definitely oh, made out of stone in large parts, so yeah. Uh, oh, the confidence we have in our build. So we're not going to shorten this front section then, since you've. Been uh, it, it. I think it does need to be shortened, but just for testing sake, let's just go ahead and do it. Okay. Um. One temporary plug coming up. Giggity. Indeed. So yeah, just just a stone layer back here because this area is not important for the dynamics of the craft itself. So there you go. That, that's all we have. So now we need to air pump it. Just pump the jam. Um, pump it up. Oh. Pump it. Pump it. Pump it up. Yes. Yeah. I'm just wondering, um, you've left the gap all the way along around the bar bets, so we only need two pumps, right? Yeah. There's one back here, then we go through the entire engine section, then we go to the front section, which will pump as well. I don't think there's any more... Oh wait, there's, a, there's still gaps in the... Matey didn't finish the underside of the prow, so... Whoops. 
I'll, I'll plug that up with stone as well. No doubt Matey will shout at me, but yeah, details. <laughs> details. <laughs> well, it, it, well, I think we he got sidetracked when we were starting to work out where, what the heck to do about the steam engine's location, so, you know. He was distracted by something that we were trying to work out anyway. <laughs> but, um, again, it's, it's like, when we were all working on that, it drew everyone onto the task. Because everyone was trying to weigh in on it and do different things with it. I think that's plugged now. Where's that pump? Mr. Pump, what do you say? You say nothing because we aren't actually in the water. Okay, fair enough. Have you just assumed the gender of that pump? Yeah, um, seriously, huh? What the hell were you thinking? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn. Uh, the, the, the gender discussion is so utterly insane. <laughs> I know. Um. Yeah, which one of the 52 genders is that pump? Unless that pump tells me otherwise, I'm going to assume it's a Mr. Except a, unless I call it a Mrs. in which case, sucks to be you, pump, I don't care about your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, let's see. Um, yeah, there's been some... My chat has revived after like an hour, so... Mine's been dead for a while, actually, mm. but whatever. Yeah, it's, I think mine died when I started working on the Steam system. Right, uh, Clint asks, how about using two on the mid and one on the sides? Uh, I think Clint might be talking about the turret locations. I don't know. So, yeah, I think like the older style ones, like they had um, the side mounted turrets or things. But yeah, too far along in the build to make an easy switch like that, though. I also don't like them. Mm. Um... Don't like what? Oh, oh, shut up, Existence. <laughs> <laughs> Side mount of main guns. Is, is, is Existence still in the chat, actually, or is he one uh, uh, She's not in mine, so... Uh, no, I mean I mean the Discord chat. Oh. He's, he's wanted off. He's wanted off. Okay, so that's why he, he said to that. Okay. It's just the right. three of us. Uh, Jason Sandella says, hi, guys. Yep, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Jason. Yep. Um, Clint says, a big pre-burn, then lower as needed. So, yeah. Um, that was actually kind of the plan to get them up to speed a bit faster and then let them stabilize. Like, they should be stable now because they've just been running on the, the singles for a while, so... Yeah, just over 20% effects is what they're topping out at, roughly. Okay. The, the, side, the two side propellers are slightly faster, but that's because they've got a little bit less mass to work with because the, the shafts aren't quite as long, so... Uh -huh. Um... Ja Jaza, welcome to the stream. Hello! Welcome to the stream, yes. Um... Says keep on building. <laughs> welcome to the madness. Yeah, welcome to the insanity. You're nuts, a lot of you. Um, but so are we, so hey. And then existence. This is the comment where I said existence should shut up, thinking he was still in here. Um, existence says, I wonder if a guy named Iron Mark V is reading these comments. Mega think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna re I'm gonna release the um, tractor by the way now. Okay. So see what it does. Well, it's not stabilized at all, so it's immediately sinking. It's doing 13 meters a second. And the whole uh, thing is... Almost the whole thing is underwater. Um, we seem... Yeah, active yeah. assist because it's really heavy, actually. Um, but the propellers... Well, part of the problem is that we don't have the mass of the superstructure as well. So that's affecting it. But, yeah. Um... Uh, it went up to 15, but I think that's because the bow raised up. Yeah, the bow raised up, but part of that force is now being directed upwards rather than straight forwards, so that's not helping. Um, yeah, the problem is that it flooded because it's incomplete. Yeah. And it has no, nothing to assist its pitch. It's going to need pitch assist, though, to do anything. But it's still moving at a decent speed for a craft of this size. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I would probably go for about 10 meters per second for a craft that size. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not even its final form. But yeah, we can probably expect um, high teens with its current configuration if we can get it stabilized. Uh, should yeah, be able to do some stabilization uh, uh, real quickly yeah. on the fly because uh, it's got yeah, engines just, and just fuel. Yeah, just balloons on until stable. 
<laughs> the balloons, the, well, the balloons would slow down a bit due to air resistance, but it would help a lot with the drag from the water. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I was thinking, like, um, remember the Rex Arias had this issue as well. Yeah. Um, so I think the stabilizing propeller base would be the most effective course here. Um, hydrofoils, maybe? In the front? Um, Jawa says, don't use huge parts, Zion! Exclamation mark. Are we running out of huge parts or what? Um, um, well, we are running out of space. That's why this, uh, the entire steam system is actually a mix of um, large and huge parts. But uh, actually, I think it looks okay looking at it. It certainly works well enough. And the entire craft is now listing. Are you doing things to stability damage? Negative. Hmm, okay. Um, I'm, in that case, I'm going to grab it back with the dock because it's getting fa a bit far. Yeah. Away now. So it's not ready for, for full seaworthiness test, but we've got a rough idea of the speed it can do at the moment. Provided we get it stabilized, of course. So bring it back. Okay, Clint say Clint is saying steam boilers. S T E E M boilers. Um, Chaos Lord Godzilla says that um, they've been here the whole time, just been quiet. Well, oh, glad to hear it, Chaos. It's um, sometimes we do wonder, and people don't always have time to stick around for a long stream as well so there is yeah this one has been going on for quite a while so how can't say I blame are them. we actually how we are at the three hour mark almost god damn yeah so it's actually should be getting towards an end time right now where is that ship oh here it comes right it's just it was underwater so i couldn't see it properly <laughs> um clint i think tried to clarify um, his earlier comment, which was uh, two in the main and one on the side. What? Two in the chute, one in the boot, huh? Uh, Clint, can I'm sorry to say this, but can you clarify a bit further, please? I'm not still not entirely sure what you're talking about because you're just saying numbers, but not what those numbers are meant to be. Like, do you mean the main turrets or something? That's nah, what's he got means me confused. He means nukes. Nukes. Oh, what? He if no unit is given, then you're talking nukes. It's FCD. Um, point. and it's your chat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> point. Okay. Sounds like there's a meme in there somewhere. Uh, there probably is, but I'm a bit shaky on that myself. So. <laughs> but you sure know how to blow it up. Hmm. Uh, existence said, "Oh God, that drop when we ditched it in the water." So yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, it hurts. Welcome to my stream. Heitzmeister. <laughs> Yeah, Heitzmeister. Oh, yeah, what's going on, Heitzmeister? Hey. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, thank you, Clint. Um, existence seems to pick up on what was going on, but I missed it, apparently. Um, the two on the main, one on the side. Clint is saying how many boilers to put on each one. So, um, I think, yeah, they're, they're talking like how many boilers to have running on which propeller. So main power on the central prop and then the two side ones running slower mm. okay I'll, I'll fire up the second the boiler on the main and we'll see how that looks then so that'll take a bit to spin up but uh, right yeah so yeah I finally caught it um Jawa's existence said don't use huge parts why not Jowers is wondering that as well, and I am obviously confused too. It's simple there too. They're limited in, uh, in stock. Limited if you use them, you can't use them anymore. <laughs> what? If you use uh, use them, then they are all used up. I demand the best for my ship designs, good sir. I don't care if we're running out of parts and the material stocks have gone. I demand the absolute best for my ships. How dare you insinuate otherwise? God damn right. <laughs> Hitler had the right idea. Uh, someone's got to take that one out of context. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, he had a couple of things to which I actually agree. Yeah, he did have a couple of good points. Um, but but ninety-five percent um, 90, of it is kind of crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And considering the fact I've not actually mentioned which parts were good points and which ones were absolute rubbish, no doubt someone somewhere is going to take that out of context as well. So... Yeah, but then it's on them. Well, a lot of people tend to focus on that 5% result I just mentioned, so... <laughs> yeah, I think it's like... It boils down to, like, um, everything because the guy is pure evil incarnates. Kind of uh, the, that argument. Mm, well, as ideas. evil as a man suffering from bipolar disorder can possibly be, yeah. Hmm. You've also got to remember that... Um, the old phrase, um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Oh yeah, my mom's the uh, foreman of that road crew. I think we talked about this one time. Uh, yeah, we did actually. So yeah, that, that, there's all sorts of things. Yeah. I'm just finishing up the whole, whole shaping on the bow a little bit more while waiting for that boiler to come up to speed so we can see what it's going to be doing to that propeller. Okie dokie. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's <sighs> one thing I definitely have to get used to. I intend to swap my future cruise and battleships to uh, be primarily steam powered. Mm. Um, not, not because it's efficient or anything, but just because of it's fun. Well, Flat, if we want fast reaction on the system, we would actually use a steam turbine and use standard propeller systems instead. But um, nah, I want fun. They, 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 they don't, don't, don't have they don't have the force. They don't have the complexity of an involvement. I mean. I think Dama hit it on the head when he said that he doesn't really understand the seam system too well. Um, it's one of those cases where it's a complex system to get into more than anything else. So a lot of people don't really understand it too well. I so just... It, it's, all, it's, all, it's all magic and unicorns and rainbow farts and stuff. It might so as well be. That's how, that's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. I mean, are you okay? are you personally, okay? I have nothing yeah. against steam. It's just, it's not efficient yeah. enough for my liking. But since it. I'm in kind of like the mid game, I got a lot of resources to spare. So the primary reason why I sw swapped to Steam is they got big propellers. That's all. <laughs> yeah, the aesthetic value I can understand that completely because I've actually been using mimics of Steam propellers in my builds to uh, try to make them look better. So yeah. I'll usually just like put it up on a spin block and call it a day after that and have it con the uh, spin blocks controlled by ACBs so in that way um, whenever the ship gets over a certain speed the spin blocks will start up and it looks like they're making the ship move forward so yep but I tend to uh, actually li uh, like um, if it's possible and without compromising too much to combine function and looks into the same thing then yeah, I'm definitely going for that. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, Jawa said 42. Sorry, um, I don't think we were talking about the meaning of life, the universe, and everything on this show. So uh... we are talking about the meaning of everything a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but not life and the universe though. We've kind of been skipping over those topics. Uh, they, they seem vaguely important. But, uh, yeah. Uh, who cares about that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Um, let's see. Uh, Jason said, "Is this supposed to be a somewhat historic ship? Steam power, no. props, wooden decks." So, Dama. The wooden decks is mainly an aesthetic thing. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I, I give my ships wooden decks a lot. Um, my ships aren't at all historically accurate, so you know. I mean, even I started just started uh, doing that on my bigger ships. Yeah, just, it just looks it. nice. That and the uh, the wooden or the uh, metal back decking, it, it's it's got some decent stats. Bad. I mean, it's not bad at all. I think it's a little expensive for the price, but I think you you really just pay for the aesthetic quality of it more than anything. Mm. Pretty much. I mean, you pay for that with um, a slight reduction in terms of armor protection, but it's still decent in terms of... I armor. mean, let's be honest. All it is is just a hunk of metal with a wood veneer. That's all it really is. Pretty much, actually, yeah. Now, does, does this um, does this area look okay now underneath? Since I've just been working that out a bit. It seems like the middle one is spinning at a higher rate than the two side ones. 
Yeah, yeah, remember, I fired up a second boiler on it. Oh, okay. Um, so, I think it should be about stabilized now, but I meant, like, um, I've built the top bit out a bit, and I've built underneath the, the underneath section out as well, You've so... You've definitely taken a lot of care into making sure that uh, this part of the ship is protected. Kudos on it, that. Yeah, it's protected its recess, which brings the, the force of the propellers a bit closer to the center of mass of the ship, rather than having it, like, stuck right on the end like a rocket mm. kind of thing. That That is an issue with steam propellers sometimes. I'd actually prefer that if the propellers were reset further along, but um, the craft isn't quite big enough to properly manage that, I think. So, I uh, I just had a thought here. Uh, what about, like, a rudder? Um, do you think we yeah, should we go with a spin right block back. rudder, or do you think we should go with a... Uh, Regular rudder. I would probably uh, put in a couple of regular rudders just as uh, redundancy, and go for the for a big uh, spin block rudder for the looks. Actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Like, I was thinking, I, yeah, I was thinking like a big spin block rudder, like mounted underneath the rear section back here. Oh, actually, you go for twin, twins. I was thinking yet yeah, yeah. parallel uh, spin block rudders. Yeah, I'd be completely cool with that. Okay, got you. All right. Um. Make sure uh, I've got, I've got, I've got more comments, actually, guys. What's up? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you guys are both talking at once. I didn't know what the hell you, you were saying. Raz, you're first, mister. Go ahead. Um, I'm currently thinking about using uh, quad rudders, um, spin block rudders on mine, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah. I... I, I, I kind of got mixed feelings on them because they do cause a lot of drag. Yeah, but, um, it depends on the craft, really, how much of an effect but they have on the performance. Since we have a lot of potential thrust on this, I'm not going to worry about it too much. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what have we got? Right now, uh, 107, 206. So, yeah, it's, it's stabilized. I'm going to ditch it in the water again, Dan, if that's okay. No, you're fine. I'm just doing some stuff here on the back. It seems that uh, we're kind of a. We need we are a bit of. Higher up this time. Yeah, we need a little we pitch control, but. Um, I might be able to do something with that on the propellers, actually. Uh... You don't say. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, force upset, move force up or down. I think this is if I drop it down. If you, Oops, no. you drop it down, then the rear will end up higher. Um, can't you set up uh, the uh, thruster to have multiple inputs? I mean, you could have it like set for pitch control and forward thrust, couldn't you? Would that, uh, yeah, you would can, that you regulate it a little? That. Um, Not beneficial, the AI can really handle that, in my opinion. Well, there is no I'm AI sure. right now, so that doesn't matter. I'm not sure if the applied force offset actually works at all on well, the Steam Well, there is an AI, it just doesn't have a movement card, but details. You don't need a movement card, you can simply edit the behavior without a card. Now she is talking at minus that 5. That is true. Um, I, is there a specific reason why there's a, an empty spot back here? Uh, where? You mean in the upper decking? Yes. A empty spot? Yeah. What you mean inside? Um, no, 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 really. no, no, no. That, that, that's... Just no, uh, like in the uh, this railing here. I just think this would be a great spot to put a flag. In the railing? Oh, um, yeah. That was just maybe detection or whatever we found to put in it. Honestly, that was just a spare block. I mean, yeah, it could be anything. It just seemed like a good place to stick a flag. Though I have no idea where the hell the flags are now. Uh, Probably decoration. decoration. There it is. Flag post. I can't tell if that has improved the pitch or not on the craft. Oh my god, my flag looks like crap. <laughs> I hate the grease stains on them. Seriously, get rid of those. Yeah, please. It seems the back of the craft is like holding a couple of meters underneath the water. I'll switch the applied force back to negative. Where is the damn flag? Is it under AI now? It's yeah. The same. Yeah, uh, that is. I can't, it's I can't tell if doing anything, actually. How fast are we going? We are going at 19 meters a second. Are they running Wait, full I tilt? Did, I did. Yes, they are. Hmm. I did say expect something like high teens. So yeah, this thing might crack 20 actually at this rate. Um. 
I think the pitch is still a bit extreme for it though, so. I agree. Wholeheartedly, I agree. But, well, we're still working on stabilizing it and all that jazz. Uh, anyway, um, may I catch up with my chat a little bit again? No. Absolutely. <laughs> so that means I have to say oh. half of every chat. Hi, Heitzmeister. Okay he just appeared in my there. chat. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Joe ja, ja was... Uh, was clarifying a little bit. Hang on. Hey. Uh, Jawa says there's an existential limit on huge parts. Then stuck his tongue out. Okay. And then goes on to say, this is FTD. It's more limited by number of blocks than size of the blocks, as it runs on computers. I know existence is subatomic and all, but... And then just dot dot dot, so yeah. Uh, existence... Uh, I'd rather have... prefer having 5x5 and 7x7 normal props instead of the steam ones. They'd be easier for people. Um... And honestly, I would like to see those, but I think having the current Steam system is also good because then, like, if you know what you're trying to do with Steam, then you can get a more powerful prop out of it. You know, so it, it becomes like that question of like applied skill and knowledge to the craft design to try and get more performance. So I don't know, skill ceiling. Uh, maybe that's the uh, right phrase for that. I don't know. Uh, Jason Standella said that, um, yeah, he meant that, um, more, we're going for a World War II cruise or something, or at least they think it looks like I, it. I don't know, it, it's 193 meters long, I mean, I'd still like to trim it down if possible. Yeah, well, the president is definitely calling it a battleship. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it is, I can, I can see where the... Well, damn, damn it, you tend to build more realistic looking ships overall in general, so... Uh, I mean, if I built this one, a ship this long, it'd probably be like three meters thick or something, so... By this day, it's probably seven meters. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that kind of, this kind of length, if I was using my old... Oh, model, hey, rubber ducky! Style, it'd probably be, uh, be like um, this long, but like seven meters across. You said it looked a tad low in the water. You're probably right, but we haven't really <laughs> done anything yeah. with... Um, as far as pitch controls, so yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, then again, I'm usually I'm okay with stuff being low in the water. A second engine, it might help. A second engine. I think he means. Um, I think he might be talking about just regular water thrusters. Um. Well, yeah. I was, I was actually planning to try and mount some regular water thrusters just to help out, but yeah. Uh, Really, really, it just needs something to stabilize it. Either propeller-based or maybe hydrofoil-based. Just something to stabilize it and force the rear end up. That's really what it needs, but um, there's also the problem of there not being a superstructure and the vehicle's weight is going to shift around still, so... Yeah. Uh, we won't quite know what we're doing until we get the craft more complete. Sadly. But, uh, a, yeah, we can that's the reason why I love building with alloy. It's mm. a good yes. Yeah, but we've got we've got we've, we've got a heavier craft since it's mostly a metal stone hybrid. Sorry, a composite. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's composite it's composite all the hell pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it's got it's got composite armor. Yeah. So it's got that going it's for tr it. Truly, uh, quote unquote advanced. <laughs> yes. And I'm trying um, to see if there's a way to you know we could probably get like some regular thrusters on here, but I'm. I'm trying oh, I was thinking of doing my usual thing, actually. Oh? What's that? Internal no balloons? Normally, I'd centerline something towards the front. And have propellers at the front, there. Hmm. Um... Oh, I'm not talking, just... like, the turning thrusters. I'm talking about forward thrust. Yeah, so was I. Oh, okay. Give me a sec. I'll, let me get... Um, I think the javelin is probably my most recent example. Or maybe... Uh... Actually, where is my uh, mortar ship? Oh, uh, you've been messing with mortars too, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did have to solve him. <laughs> yeah, so is Heismeister, actually. He sent me oh, his yeah. own uh, mortar design that he's working on earlier. Well, yesterday. I have heard some complaints yeah. that those are probably a bit too accurate because they track. Uh, I find that they're generally inaccurate. It's, it depends on what they're hitting, if they're going to be accurate or not. Hmm. Um... That's about kind of the... 
a caliber that I was wondering what you know, would probably work best for these, and since yeah, so this is what, this was my attempt, first attempt at like a mortar ship. Yeah. So you're probably what was I'm assuming maybe like pure high explosive or what? Yeah, it's mostly high X. Yeah, but if you look underneath though, you'll see what I mean about um, at the at the prow of the ship. Oh. Okay. So, so yeah, it's got um, it built into the nose structure underneath the um, the prow of it. There mm -hmm. is part of its forward propulsion. It helps actually to keep it more balanced as well, having some force being applied at the front there, rather than it being all at the back. But, but it also acts as redundancy too, because if the back propellers get shot off, it still has the forward propeller most likely, and it can still keep moving. Mm. So um, there's multiple reasons to ha actually try and have more propeller assemblies built into a ship design. I think my main point of concern you know, would be... Um... Wouldn't that just lift the front up more? Not really. It um, moves it, forward. It, it does a little bit, but by forcing the back down a little bit, it's um, it helps to resist the ship. Um, well, it reduces the tendency of doing um, a, a, a backward a backflip. Mm. It reduces that tendency of having some of the force at the front because if it does start to go up in the air too much due to damage or whatever. Yeah. Then it'll lift the propeller out of the water, and so that won't be as much of an issue. But um, on this design, it doesn't have any kind of tensing like that at all because it's heavy enough versus it, its um, propeller force to stay stable. Okay. So, and, yeah. Just out of curiosity, are you kind of sick or something? I mean, that's not thin. What? That's actually a craft that has volume, not just weight. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, this is. That's because this also came in where, um, like, not only is this the first test of a mortar-style ship, it's also where I realized it was after the last part I did of uh, Small Fries, which is, by the way, still planned to come back. It's just getting around to doing it. Um, but it's also where I realized flat out that uh, without shields, no longer being, you know, actually useful. Which you I'm need armor now, yes. <laughs> I need armor, so this craft is also an attempt to build something more armored in my style. I, I got my style down, I think, very much so. Yeah, but, um, definitely looks like it. Yeah, but um, in terms of armor style on it, it is, if you look, actually, it's still only like two to three meter armor. Because then um, it's well, got the, that the, size? I mean, how, how big is it? 70 or uh, something like that? Uh, lengthwise? Yeah. It is 61 meters long, 13 meters wide. At yeah, that, point. that's roughly the destroyer, and for that I would only use 2 meters armor as well. Yeah, so it's 2 to 3 meters. Um, the upper deck is about the same. It's um, The upper deck is like 2 meters at most, but it's a solid craft design, so um, it's probably going to yeah. suffer if we have something like... Um, so one thing I would probably change is make the outside alloy to reduce signature by half. Uh, uh... No. <laughs> I I tried that, Raz. Honestly, I tried. Let me grab the javelin. I'll show you. Here is your javelin. Latest form. It has alloy cladding, and I absolutely hate it. <laughs> Why do you hate it? Well, you have you have to paint it in order for it to look good. True. I did paint it. It's not yet on the screen, so... Uh... Yeah, no, yeah. You'll, you'll see when it comes in. Um, my issue is... Oh, that, yeah, when uh, he switches back and forth, it, uh, like, messes with his color schemes. Um, Switching version. That, oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, it turns out that the, the the entire issue was not actually that. It was because my primary color scheme was locked for some reason. Um, but the primary ship... Um, my issue with the alloy stuff is flat out it's very easy compared to like a, a metal, a double metal. So I, I flat out prefer having that endurance over um, the reduced um, sensor uh, profile. Um, yeah, destroyers are roughly, roughly where alloy stops being useful, but for uh, definitely for a craft below that, it, uh, the added chance to not be hit. It's definitely worth more than the bit, a bit of armor. Yeah, yeah. It, on, the, on, the, on the smaller stuff, yeah, I'm okay with alloy, but like anything that the I want to even... flips from being useful to not being useful mm. anymore. 
I, I flat out prefer metal though, honestly. I think that it comes down to a personal preference that yeah, we're having this discussion. I mean, I accept that you like it. I don't. I exactly like it for small craft. For big craft, I definitely prefer uh, metal. I kind of fucked up on my battleship that I'm currently building. I should have used uh, metal on the outside, but uh, for some reason I uh, defaulted to alloy. And now I don't want to replace half the ship. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, um, the javelin, if you remember, was originally pure metal. I reclad the entire thing in alloy, and now I want to change it back. So. <laughs> Uh, wasn't there like some kind of uh, thing that you could do where um, yeah, but your, the, that tool your... hasn't really been updated in ages. Oh, so it probably doesn't even work. Yeah, I didn't even know it existed. Oh dear. Right. Um, back to my comments. I'm afraid. Okay. If that's okay. No, you're fine. Go ahead. You don't. You don't have to sound so excited about it, Emma. I'm usually not such an excitable person. I think it just kind of runs in my family. I don't know. I might that as well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dower said, um, "If you consider 10 centimeter instead of the instead, the game becomes more realistic instantly. The vehicles also act a bit better, uh, a bit better. So, uh, also, it's a bit like they were much smaller. Google the square cube law. So I think um, Jowers is arguing there, like um, the size of the character versus the size of the ships might be a bit off. If we think about how the ships is, are formed. Yeah, the problem is that um, one meter in FTD." Is not actually one meter for the physics engine FTD. Oof. Um, yeah. yeah. That makes that sense. Leads the, that, that is all the problems we currently have. Okay. Um. Let's see. Moving on. Uh. Jason Standella thinks that um, Chaos Lord Godzilla has the best YouTube name ever. <laughs> and Chaos Lord's not bad. Their existence's response to that was um. Someone call um. Ghidorah, quickly. Ghidra. It's Ghidra. Ghidra. Yeah. Oh, really? Ghidra. <laughs> right, um... That's okay, I don't expect you to know the names of Kaiju. That's okay. No, the moment you said Ghidra, I recognized it. Um, let's see. Uh, Hertzmeister says most has a nasty surprise for unarmored decks. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of them. Most people are used to armoring the sides of ships and the actual superstructure, not the actual upward-facing decks. That tends to be a bit more ignored. That is true. Compared to the side structure of a ship. That is very true. Mm. Um, though that's offset by the fact that mortars are relatively shorter range and they can be harder to use. So. Yeah, but then you use cram and they also have the deck, so... Um... Um, it depends on the angles you expect shells to be coming in on. I mean, this this dates all the way back to my argument with, um, well, argument to what I was talking about with um, Matey earlier, when I wanted the heavy armor to extend up to just under the deck, rather than extend, ending a few meters below it. Just because of the angle of incoming shots half the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, exist existence says, wear protection on your decks, people. And Chaos Lord Godzilla added, decks with condoms. So, yeah. Keep your protection on, kids. Be a deck on your deck. Yep. <laughs> oh, um, I think this one's directed at you, actually, Raz. Uh, Hersmeister says, your destroyer is not mine. Yeah. So, again, this, sure, is uh... <laughs> this is, again, someone weighing in with their personal build preference versus someone else's build yeah, preference. I think he actually primarily meant the size. Because mm -hmm. what he Maybe. calls a frigate is roughly my my destroyer size, so he essentially he's, his ships are once quite exactly one size larger than mine. Mm. Um, <laughs> Dama? Yes. As a reminder, so we absolutely do not forget this thing. We still really need to do a thing where we build a craft to give an instructions and see what they'd look like separately. Actually, I I had a an idea that I wanted to pitch to you that you just reminded me of. Go. Um, I was thinking. Why not do like a uh, a co-op build? But my idea for it is, is instead it of a like half of a thing each, and then see what they look like no, together. No, no. Where one of us builds a hull, or actually both of us can build a hull. We swap you know, the blueprints, then we add a system onto it that we just keep swapping them back and forth like that till it's done. Then the question becomes, are you allowed to adjust the hull based on the systems you're trying to install it? If it's a size requirement, I think I could live with that, yeah. Me. 
I know. I what do you think? No, I would actually say I would actually say no, just for the f uh, just to make uh, sure that the hull is already built with enough space in, in mind, and then you have to make it fit. But then, so then you're saying we like, which is like mo mobility system? Like, would that be included on the hull, or are you allowed to borrow into the armor to install things like propellers? You're definitely allowed to borrow in. I I guess what you're trying to ask here, Ian, is are we allowed to? Uh, Move like stuff around to uh, add systems, or are we no, trying like to shoehorn it? No, like um, if if you built a hole, right, and I got it. Uh huh. One of the tricks I use for improving mobility of most craft is I'll actually dig into the armor and build recessed propeller systems in them. Mm. So would that be val valid? Because I would be. I think that would be valid. Yes. I'd be installing the system, but I would also be altering the hole that you gave me. So long as the visual shape stays the same, I'm, I don't yeah, have visually problem. it would not change much, if at all. I mean, I I kind of do similar stuff. I just hide them with uh, by turning off the uh, particle effects and uh, putting mimic blocks over the top. <laughs> so that that would be like a, a yes, depending on how much it changes things. I suppose, yeah. I know. Is that too uh, too broad a rule, or a, a little bit? But I think it's like as long as the overall appearance doesn't shift, change much, then it, that is defined enough to make sense. If that makes sense. Um, sure. Why not? <laughs> right. Um, to be determined. Let's call that one that. Honestly, anyway, that topic. that's just a that's just something I wanted to pitch to you. So yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, do it yeah, what you will. Like we can do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On a separate topic, I'm um, seeing you work with the Steam stuff a bit more. Um, do you yeah, intend to put, make those in essentially three boiler rooms, so they have a bit of R between them? So one gets damaged, the others might survive? Um, this one, I need to be careful with it, because it might need some um, axis shifting. But um, I obviously mean, I think the ship's going to be stable enough with the propellers where they are, so that should be okay. Um, this bit I'm adding in here, though, it was talked about earlier, but um, we got sidetracked and then went on to a different system. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is also something I like to do, by the way. It's like um, I'm flipping over half of the boilers just so it, it's um, a bit less, like a, it doesn't look quite so ribbed on the, along the length of it. Uh huh. So it looks a bit more solid that way, I think. Anyway, moving on. Um, what I've done is this boiler rack at the back here. This is going to be for the um, ignition boilers, so they'll help bring the pressure up once the craft first starts, and then they'll shut off. And the boiler set at the back here will be sustaining the propeller system. Okay. So it's just so it comes up to speed more quickly. So and it just so it just does pedal to the metal yeah, till it gets up to speed and then it just kind of yeah, goes to a cruise mode. Like maybe like the first minute of um, No, that makes sense game, to me. They'll run hotter and then it, it then it um, that makes sense. resource consumption will drop by like I think like Two fifths, roughly, as the actual boilers got turned off again. Mm -hmm. uh... Godzilla says existence. Don't forget about us. <laughs> um, oh wait, hang on. Let's, let's also comment some things. Ah. Sorry, guys. I, I think I need to catch up with the, the comments. Again. That's fine. Unless there's something you got you want to specifically talk about first. No, we're good. Is that? Okay, right. Uh, where was I? Uh, your you tell me. My was the last comment I read out, I believe. So, Jawas, after that. Um, the Ford propeller looks nice, although with huge parts, maybe a bit excessive. Um, okay, I, I know exactly what you're talking about there, um, Jawas. I'll come back to that in a second. But having props so that there's some buoyancy behind them can prevent a boat from flipping in from the depths. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why... I having one at the prop, and that's why I was trying to explain rather badly at the time as well. So, um, that's one of the reasons, sorry, one of the benefits of having a propeller up at the front like that. Um, let me goes on. Um, right. Yeah, explaining exactly what I tried to and apparently failed to explain. It's <laughs> I'm so good at this, jeez. Because, well, the prop, the prop would lift out of the water and the upforce behind it would counter the flip force speedboats can suffer from. So, yeah, especially on lighter crafts, that's something I didn't mention. Lighter craft especially benefit from having a propeller in a forward position like that. Es especially more if it's the only propeller. Hmm. Because then it, it can try to start trying to flip, but 
it starts to refuse to do so just because of where the force is being applied. Yeah, essentially if you have the propeller slightly in front below the set of mass, then it's essentially un unable to flip. Hmm. Now that depends on the design as well, because um, something else you can do is lift that forward propeller up so it's actually recessed in the underside of the main hull itself rather than a bit lower like I had on that um, mortar ship I spawned in. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it's used in, in, in the wild when I actually uh, hit the no, inside actually, of the Actually the Javelin has a similar system, though because it's a bit longer it's actually got multiple underside mounted propellers for more uh, propeller force. Mm -hmm. How I hit them is I made put them up so high that I um, essentially had a one tile uh, hole behind the propeller long enough to get the full propeller force. But it's, yeah. it's, it's actually it wasn't entirely inside. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've done as well. Um, I'm just showing on my stream right now. You should see it very shortly, Raz. Um, how I've got actually like technically three underside propellers, though two of them are in the forward half of the ship, and then there's one a bit further back under the main propeller bank at the rear. And that is actually a very stable craft as well, and hard to stop it. Because yeah, um, I had you, mine even higher up, yeah. so I really had to make a hole in the armor behind the propeller. So that, yeah, uh, I, I get what you mean, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, with huge parts of it, says right. Jowers' comment there um, ties onto something which is very bad with the, the team system right now. And honestly, I wish they would add a part for it. Which is, what I want is an axis shifter, which allows it to turn a 90 degree corner. That would be awesome. That would hu help so much. Well, just but, a 45 uh, degree, yeah. Yeah, but um, what, what Joe was, was saying about um, huge parts is like, um, if I was to get a huge steam propeller underneath at the front of the ship, I'd basically have to build the entire steam system down underneath the ship. Except for maybe the um, the actual bo the boiler assembly and the piston assembly to a lesser extent could be relocated up upwards inside the nose of the ship. But then that means that the underside... Um, massive fin that houses the reduction gears and things would still have to be further back so yeah the steam system is very unwieldy trying to put it into an underside mount basically so that is an, an issue with the steam system in general as it is at the moment yeah what's well, so, you say it, it shouldn't really be done let's see um moving on the amount of, the amount of drag you add is too much clint says to protect our decks we should rubber them up Rubber them up. Uh, technically, yeah. Well, yeah. the hell does that mean? Rubbers, uh, yeah, it, it plays on the earlier comment about uh, ships with condoms. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chaos Lord Godzilla said, "Laughlands, blood for the blood god. You with your childish humor, sperm for the sperm bank." Hmm. Who's I'm, childish I'm, humor? I prefer the milk for the conflicts. Yeah, Milk for the Cornflakes is a good one. Well, whose childish humor are we talking about? Well, because I find it all funny, I don't I don't really know. I'm, I guess I'm childish? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Right, um, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, oh, Existence has something that's being thrown at you, Dammer. Oh, great, what do about I do now? Minutes ago, about, about ten minutes ago. What the hell do I do now? Um, he says, Spud Cubs did that first. Did what first? The uh, uh, blueprint swapping. The what? blueprint what? A blueprint swapping. Swapping back and forth between two or more people. Okay, so what? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Diamond doesn't seem to be aware of it too much, but and it doesn't doesn't matter if someone did it first, as long as um, we have fun doing it. Exactly. I mean, um, I yeah. I got from um, some else did a build a ship first, so should we stop building ships? Well, what I first came across on Last Stand Gamers was like um, you build a wall with an outline in it, and that outline yeah, is the Yeah, I've seen that. It. Then you, yeah, then you do like one person builds on one side, one person builds on the other. You don't see what each other is building, and then <laughs> when you're done with the build, you tear away the wall and you see what you've got. Basically, so yeah, it's like. You build half a ship each, and then a quarter of a ship each, and you see what kind of abomination you end up with. I would probably not flip it left right. I would probably flip it up, down, and front, and, and front, back. Yeah, um, well, um, it, it works anyway, really. The problem with left right is that it, that you probably don't have uneven drag force on both sides, and that can be a problem. If you make it back front, uh, then it doesn't really matter because it's still even uh, even drag on both sides. The ship doesn't suddenly turn left just because of drag. 
Yeah, there, there are all sorts of ideas we've had, like for like um, co-op or multiplayer things we could do, and it's like we just haven't had time to do them. But, but they could still be fun to do, so you know. Yeah. Uh, the will see. is there, uh, just the time is not. Yeah, and because we've both got different um, commitments and different lifestyles going on as well, so it's like you've got um, very busy work, which often kicks in because you're in a different country. Um, at times, that makes it um, tricky to coordinate with me sometimes. So, yeah, and vice versa. So. Sorry, moving on. Um, international time zones and global stuff. Yeah, why can't all you blooming foreigners be on the same time as me? Who cares that you're in a different part of the world and it's night time when it's day for me? There, you've got to live by my schedule. <laughs> the world is flat anyways, I mean... British imperialism at its best right there, folks. Yeah, the, yeah, the world is flat anyways, <laughs> we all know this. The flat earthers are correct. Oh my god, I can't stand all, those people. All hail, um, all, <laughs> all hail whoever the current leader is of that moment. I can't be bothered to look the name up. <laughs> all hail the oh, wait, no. people. All, all, um... all, hail, all hail President Trump. <laughs> and uh, that is not meant seriously to anyone offended or who actually does support some of Trump's policies or whatever. I just know sometimes he's a bit of a laughing stock. <laughs> but, um, it, it, it... I can't remember when he wasn't. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, when he's stupid and becomes scary. Careful, Raz, you, Raz, you are treading on the same treacherous path that I was just on, to stop it. <laughs> right. Um... Well, the funny thing about Trump, though, is uh, especially when it comes to politics uh, it, as, as far as uh, in Europe, um, he seems to do better with the Eastern Europeans than he does the Western for some reason. Yeah, he does. I At least that's does. the trend that I've noticed. Hmm. Anyway, uh, moving on before we get into politics and stuff. Let's see. Um... It wasn't so much politics as just an observation. Yeah, I know. That, that's why I was yeah. trying to say it away. Like, um, I'm not mocking Trump. It's just like laughing at something because there's some silly stuff around that guy. I have no problem with mocking Trump. But... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, with, he's got, with, a, he's, with a name like that, he's expecting to draw some mockery anyway. So, hey. Uh, Existence says seven guys, one boat video. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, Is that uh, oh, 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 wait. Existence says, yeah, apparently there was a Nine Guys, One Boat video at some point. Uh, yeah, I I think uh, I know which one he's referring to. Okay, Um, just so you guys know on Steam... Steam? <laughs> Stream! Uh, what I've just done is, I've got this boiler with a 60 second delay, which triggers when there's an enemy on the field um, and so this thing will cut out these three boilers at the back because I put a range limit on it so for the first 60 seconds those boilers will be on but I'm also setting it to a, um, a high priority as well like priority 50 because why not they need a second one to end one again yeah um, now there will be another ACB which will kick in the boilers when an, the battle starts but then a minute later this one will come on and it's got higher priority and it will shut off the rear boilers so the, those boilers will help get things up to speed for the first minute and then they'll shut off and the four boilers left at the front of the steam engine assembly will be the ones keeping the propellers turning. Yeah, just make sure you put the ACB somewhere where it, uh, it's hard to kill it. Um, it's actually in the back section with the rest of the steam assembly because it's got to be since it's um it's got a, a range on it. You could use the name feature, the name filter by stuff. I've, I have no experience with that. I've never practiced with it, so um, I'm not going to tinker with it right now because what I'm doing I know works. Something like that I want to check it and make sure I know what I'm doing before I show it on the stream that's, so that I'm not giving bad advice or that's something. That's fair, you know? yeah. So yeah, it's like um, I'm, fam I'm familiar with it it'll work this way, it might not be the best but the best depends on your definition anyway. Yeah, best is highly subjective. It, 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 it'll do the job. For the moment. And, and at most Sorry, at worst, it might be useful someone seeing a way to do it. It might not be the way they want to do it, but it still shows a way to do it. Yeah. If there's enemy in range, all boilers will kick up to full power. Okay, I, I think I'm going to prefab and chop the front of this, just so we can have a uh, more complete idea what the hull's going to look like. 
That's fine, yeah. So I'm just giving uh, you a heads up on that? That's fine. Um, I just wanted to get that Steam section actually finished up in terms of the actual Steam engine before I forgot or before we end stream. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and prefab and grab. I'm looking at the nose now, so we'll see the moment it falls off. Um, let's see. <laughs> It's becoming a Sphinx? Very yes, well, could be. Um, but sadly, my stream is chugging a little bit as well at the moment, so... It, I wish I knew why it kept doing that. I think it's just because of my my record are you, computer. Are you also recording onto, onto your hard drive or something? No. This is purely going out of stream, so this is a computer's... And computer plus... It's, it's choking on the, the game and the recording software. It's, uh, yeah. So it's got a gag reflex. It's a potato. <laughs> Sadly, okay, the slow clap Today we learned in, in, in plant anatomy that apparently potatoes can have a gag reflex. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Uh, correct facts only here, folks. <laughs> um, oh my god, this prefab's massive! Holy crap. I know, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's going to be the issue. Um... I had a preview earlier where I had to slice a horizontal slice through my entire ship. Um, you, you did remember, Dama, that you can use shift click on the plus and minus to add, go up by five instead of one, right? Really? Yeah. Thanks. You Indeed. Didn't know that either of us? I didn't. I haven't read <laughs> change dogs in ages. Uh, I am. Oh, never mind. I was going to say that was getting a little close there. <laughs> right, but yeah, it's, it's so useful. Uh, I was using it early in the stream, but I didn't think to mention it. Uh, right, back to my. Comments. So uh, you said it goes what multiples of ten? Yeah, it uh, multiples of five. It oh, okay. Way faster than doing it one point at a time. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Hertzmeister said about ten minutes ago. So I, I'm still on a ten minute delay for the chat. Sorry, guys. Um. Still waiting for turboprops and actual steam turbines connected to propellers. Hmm. They do okay. have steam jets, but that's probably about as close as you're going to get. Uh, turboprops and actual steam turbines connected to the propellers. Is that... We can do something similar, but... Uh... Oh, I was looking away. I missed the moment when the, the bow disintegrated. Uh, it's... Yeah. Still disintegrating, or trying to anyway. On my stream, though, any moment, so that's fine. And I think we got a bit yeah, of a collision yeah. going on. Your uh, javelin nope. here. <laughs> uh, go away, javelin! No. Bad javelin. Bad, bad, bad javelin. javelin. I'll hit you with this new paper. I swear it. You rolled it up first, right? What the heck is it doing? Well, that's the problem with leaving a couple of random ships just spawned in. It's like sometimes they just go for a wander. I think they drifted too far away, so their AI's activated. <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, and then it's rolled over because I think it collided with part of the ship and now it's stuck underneath. <laughs> Unfortunately, that, because of that, I was looking away from my stream page, so I didn't see the power falling off on that either. All right, oh. putting the... Prow in its final position right now. I think that probably chopped us off about maybe 12 meters. Oh my god, this is taking a sweet ass time. Yeah, well, it's. It's absolutely massive. It's a really big prefab, that's so. Yeah. It is. And unfortunately, I didn't copy the settings on Macy's Mimic Block. What Mimic Block? The one on the prow. The very front. That, that's kind of why I was hoping that um, Matey would have actually done that, that move rather than us having to do it. I don't know which Mimic Block you're talking about, but... There's, there's one on the very... Wait. There's a settings that actually... Oh, it, there's I actually some it. There's some blocks missing on the bottom. Oh, well, that's, that, that bit was never fin finished. That's why there's a stone layer in there, because I plugged it up before we started trying to float this thing. Okay, no big deal. Alright, uh... Chaos Lord Godzilla is asking, what's the strangest craft you've made yet? Actually... Um, there, there's a nuclear 
spinning flail. A nuclear what? Spinning flail. Is that something you built? No, that's um, Chaos Lord Godzilla's. Oh, okay. Oh, he, he has that, uh, that heals itself and then makes more nukes. Hmm, I've never made anything strange like that. Uh... Well, I guess it depends on what your definition of strange is. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's another ACB I need to add to the Steam system. Oops. Which is uh, slightly important. It's the shut off ACB. Oh, yeah, that, that could be important. Especially if we're trying for efficiency, yeah. Um, Meh, efficiency is for the weak. So, sanity. Yeah, that, that's my saying. Sanity. <laughs> Only because I accidentally superimposed it upon you, but... No, you you imposed the version which is um, weak as in the time frame. That is true. That is true. Uh, was it Skippy that fixed that, or was it you? I, I forget. No, idea. Uh, no, I never did. I didn't have a mod power at the time. Hmm. Right, yeah, so if there's no enemies, then um, the boilers will set down to zero. Bear in mind, though, if you're setting this up while trying to tinker with the Steam system, you want to, to disable the uh, ACB, because this will stop you from having the boilers and things passively active. Having an active ACB turning it off because there's nothing hostile. Uh, I also need to turn off the always forward setting for the propellers as well, while I remember. Because we've tested them so far and I'm happy with their performance at this stage. So we don't need them running constantly right now. There we go. Right. Okay. Sorted. Um, my craziest design... I don't have anything outlandish like that, I'm afraid. Normally people are kind of weirded out by the shapes my craft take more than anything else, but that's about it. Does that sound about right I to you? The, I think the strangest stuff you have is uh, the placement of your ammunition. And your other... Well, where, where, it's... where it's ridiculously easily damaged. Exactly. You mean you <laughs> sneeze on it and it explodes violently? That, that's, no, that's that's more just for lack of armor. Explode. Yeah, look at if you look at my my half of my craft. If you look at them in the wrong way, they just go hell with this and suicide. <laughs> yep, just just collect glare a little bit of them and boom. Uh, the one that thing I think most recent old craft is probably my slender BB. Oh yeah, that that was actually a pretty interesting design. It's an odd one. It's also one of those odd ones which technically has only has a three sorry a five meter wide hull. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't see that very often. Mm, yeah, no, and probably probably for a reason. No offense. Yeah, the thing is, though, this is made before the shield changes, so it relies on shields. Uh, so with current, it wouldn't be valid if I finished it. Yeah, uh, even, the, even before the shield changes, armor still have quite a bit. Yeah, but armor requires bulk to have armor. Yeah. But yeah, this was meant to be like a battleship-grade vessel, even though it's... You got yeah. a Geo? Yeah, we have a Geo here. Hello. Hello, Geo. Hello. We have a Geo. Hello, Geo. How are you? Uh, quite well, actually, for once. Things aren't all horrible. <laughs> Salty as ever, I see. <laughs> hmm. Well, we are on an ocean, so it's only appropriate. W what? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> what is that monstrosity you have there? What is what? That monstrosity. <laughs> this is the uh, Slender BB. I mean, look at it. It's razor thin. The main hull exactly. is literally like, only like five meters or so thick. And then it's actually got these side mountings on it with the different weapons, as you can see. <laughs> so it's one of my stranger crafts. I think might be the quote-unquote strangest. And honestly, I... Kind of, part of me thinks I should finish it at some point because it's actually really effective, but it would need a weapon rebuild. The hull, though, is still fairly sound. Yeah, but part of me wants to ask, how many clowns can you fit in that thing? <laughs> well, considering how well they fit into a clown car, probably a lot. But yeah, th this thing, though, would be very fast because it's, it would be very low drag. So that would be one of yeah, its better. Yeah, but, but it couldn't turn. <laughs> oh, no, it could turn. Yeah, I, I know in FED it can, but in real life it couldn't. It's yeah, but life this isn't real life now, is it? It could, have, it probably could in real life actually. Yeah, the um, question is the turning circle, but yeah. Yeah, well, it, it, it's about straight line speed rather than like that. So, yeah, it's an odd thing. 
I would have to tear down and rebuild the weapon, as I said, because the APS change and all that jazz. It, they should still work in this version, though. Yeah, holy fuck, that's thin. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, damn it, you might want to get this view as well, but zoom out so you can see the your um, platform and see both of the ships. The no, yeah, I've seen right this before. And you'll you'll see there's a slight difference in the profile of the ship. I gotta it's say that right is an interesting engine that you got in there. Um, I Wait. forget what I did with that engine, honestly. Um, what? There's there's still comments for me to catch up on. Let's see. Existence saying the flat Earthians took oh, over the end. stream. Yeah. Um, Clint swore at that. <laughs> uh, Chaos Lord points out that flat ear. There are flat Earthers about out there that believe birds don't exist. What? That's the first okay. I've heard that one. Um, I've heard of people that uh, believe in a hollow Earth. That's a thing. Mm, let's see. Um, other than that, a little, mostly continuing with the blood god and milk for cornflakes parts that we were on about earlier. Sperm for the sperm bank, polio for the politics. <laughs> oh dear. Well, dress, dress FDR got a bit of that, so yeah. Mm. Um, yes, and then so uh, Hertzmeister said hello to you, Gio. Yeah, I, I read that. I'm on yeah, your stream yeah. because I wanted to see the ship. <laughs> and then Hertzmeister said, is that ship on a diet? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um... it's bulimic. Actually, there are some, several other theories about it, it seems. Uh, Vassal says it's a fashion model version of a battleship, half starved and razor thin, all bones and sharp angles, no flesh at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why this thing was meant to allow shields. Um, and then, go, and then yeah. Chaos Lord says um, it's not on a diet; it just got sent to the Gulag. Yeah, that kind of fits, honestly. Well, um, why is Rasul both in the chat and? Uh, he was in, in the, the chat, chat first, and then he came into here. So, oh. No, he just sent a message. Because I found inappropriate to uh, interrupt him, uh, we can't in the chat. With essentially oh. a bit of humor. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're all a bunch yeah, of cheeky weapon, bastards, weapon, why not? Weapon systems. This thing actually has... Uh, actually, Chaos Lord, you, you subscribed to my channel after I responded to you on the mini-pack video. Uh, this battleship design actually has a mini-pack in it. Built into the upper funnel just up here. <laughs> the pack is almost as wide as the ship. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the yeah the pack system is actually almost as wide as the whole ship. But uh, yeah, it's got a pack installed. Yeah, the ship is five blocks wide. I mean, the pack is at least uh, three blocks. Yeah, the, so, the, the um... pack is at least three blocks. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So um, it's actually a very slow firing pack, but it's um, for a call. It was set to a high, a ten second charge sniper effects. Uh, yeah, it's an EMP pack there, which is basically the entire height of the ship. The, the bottom is somewhere down here in the hole. So that's that. Um, then we've got the primary guns, which are these rail-assisted things. Spikes. Uh, I don't... Where did I put the ammo customizer on this thing? I've forgotten. It's, it's been so long since I've looked at this. Shift B. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah. Let's, let's excuse me. Just so we can have a look at the thing. Yeah, here, here, here's the um, overall system layout on it. Uh, there's the AI core, there's the... Mm. Mm. And I wish to know, are those bulges spin blocked? Yes. Uh, uh, madness! <laughs> Sparta! <laughs> they, they were spin blocked, but they are fitted fully with um, anti-missile lasers. And the um, they are the spin blocks are located in the bottom of the ship, and also revealed by this is the fact that the ship actually has a warp drive fitted to it. <laughs> so he's got all thing? kinds of bells and whistles in there. Goddamn. Maybe I should yeah. actually finish this thing. <laughs> it you is a strategy, but not a bad one. <laughs> you can see where the pack system is as well. It was right there. Where did I saw the ammo customizers? Oh, there somewhere. There's a, oh, the second AI at the back there. Um, mm. Heard a little, little ammo customizers. Did I? Were they in the under? Oh, there they are. They're all at the very bottom underneath it. Right. Perfect spot to get hit by torpedoes. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, here's the here's the one for the main guns. I recognise it because it's incredibly long. They are uh, hollow point he secondary charge he. 
with inertial fusing, fra some frag just mixed in because why the hell not? <laughs> and a whole bunch why of railguns and things, and they are actually 200 millimeter guns. Those things. So basically, you saw this cool thing and you just duct taped it in. Because why not, man? Uh, no, this is like. Uh, it's all those cases where I right. everything from scratch myself with no idea what the hell I was doing. So this is meant to be like a low caliber but very high impact shell. Oh, Jesus. Because. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's sick. Sick. This thing. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> Uh, Joe says that thin BB could be an okay design for a ramship or something. Small profile from the front. Yeah, very much. Though this thing's so thin because it was meant to be fast. You might actually I'm want to add a plasma car to the front so you can simply drive through an enemy. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And then Existence says that ship is packing quite some packs. Right. Thanks for that, Existence. <laughs> but yeah, this no. thing... Um... The individual shells are not that spectacular because they're only 200s rather than 500s, but they're meant to be like fast, very fast travel speed. I forget what the railguns are set to on these. Uh, uh, main guns. Well, you can I see the, the main guns are incredibly thin as well. Yes, Chia? You said this was made before the APS changes. Yes. Change. Oh my god. What? Heresy, I say. With all those he high explosive heads. Uh, madness. uses 6,300 per shot. All accuracy. Oh, oh, so these things are set for pure railgun accuracy. I get the feeling that the railgun settings have reset themselves since I built this, because that doesn't sound like something I do. So I don't know hmm. what they're doing in terms of railgun, but... Uh, they do something. They do something, yeah. Uh, they just don't need that accuracy, though. The, but um, without the accuracy, these things go at um, muzzle velocity is only 377. Am I looking at the right shell? I am. Yeah, so I definitely had some speed buff in there rather than pure accuracy. That doesn't sound right at all. Yeah. And then in the also, they, also said to, are... they also said to two degree accuracy, so. Um... I'm yeah, sure that... that, that, that's the settings have reset themselves in there. Um, yeah. But the subguns, though, hollow point, solid warhead, frag. Uh, the kitchen sink shell, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a kitchen, a kitchen sink shell, yeah. But um, they're only a 90 millimeter though. So they're, they're very low. But they, these are things built into those quad barrel guns on the sides. So yeah, um, the main guns when I fire them, these guys. There's definitely some settings mixed up in there somewhere, because, yeah. Yeah, I think the rear turret's actually reset itself a little bit. Hey, I do we want to give this another speed test after I uh, move some bits and bobs around? I got the uh, the new prow mounted on the front, and uh, what do you think? Yeah, sure. That's fine, yeah. Um, just let me know when it's done, and we'll drop it in the water. Uh, I think I'm at a good point where we could do that, if I'm to be honest. Oh, no. I'll just copy the clipboard on the existing ones because um, they're, they're meant to look fire like um, they kind of burst fire these main guns. There we go. Mm -hmm. But they're long barrel, high accuracy. That's why they're so slender and thin. But the side guns though are yeah, noodle barrels. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're, 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 not, they're not noodles. They're chopsticks. They're rapid, uh. they're, they're rapid fire. These guns, though, so it's like you can see what they're doing. I think it's just because of a limit of like multiplayer. You can't see the the shots from the two forward guns, but it's got three of those per side. You can see it on my end, though. Only the host usually can see the shells. I know it's kind of crazy. Um, it depends on those things. It's like um, we clients can't see lasers. Um, I was very surprised I could even see the pack, honestly. That's half the time not the case, but usually we can't see lasers. So I think it, de it depends, and it seems to vary session to session as well. But um, that was a close-in weapon system as well. But that, that that's my weirdest build, the slender battleship. Should I show them the uh, flying skull? Yes. You already showed the flying skull everywhere. Yeah, but I think he, he means show everyone that's on the stream. So um, I think that's a bunch of people Probably on the stream that... Probably my weirdest this. build so far. I would think the Bukake bomb is that. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you might uh, be right. You might be right. <laughs> yeah, the Bukake bomb. But yeah, this is something Dama did recently. Just a flying burning skull. It's got lasers in the eyes and it's got missiles for t in its teeth. So, yeah. 
in his mouth. Uh, the game doesn't include an olfactory function, I'm afraid, so no idea. But yeah, it's a very smiley, very happy thing. Hmm. I think it needs horns, though. Mm. It needs Let's floating see. horns. Uh, Chaos Lord Godzilla says, I want to see you get drunk like Lathland and then build something. Oh, I don't know if you guys would like that. I get very mouthy when I'm drunk, and I'm pretty mouthy when I'm sober. You guys have never seen me drunk because I don't drink. Yeah. I'm crazy enough without it. <laughs> this is true. Fair <laughs> point. Next comment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, Raz actually weighed in right after that comment as well. He said, um, Raz said, now he gets the same level of insanity simply by existing. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, I dropped her down in the water. Uh, Anna, if you want to kick on the boilers. And when, and when he starts building, he easily exceeds Lath in insanity level by multiple magnitudes. Mm. So Chaos Lord wasn't dissuaded and still wants to see me build while drunk. Mm. Oh, right. Oh, you dropped the ship in. Yes. Uh, maybe you could talk Chaos Lord into buying you the alcohol then if he wants to see it that bad. I mean. Well, it's probably the only way I'd get the alcohol because I can't afford it otherwise. <laughs> no money sucks. Anyway, that, that's huh. my rant over for today, but uh, yeah, right. Um, I will set it, so if there's no enemy, we will get the boilers kicking up to full power for the moment. So that's just side circumventing that particular ACB. Mm. Boilers to full. And I'll get the uh, drives to full too. There we go. So this is, this is um, starting to spool up with all boilers running. Though we need to get it out of the water though. Yeah, I'm on it. Which boat? Not the skinny one. No, no. Um, Another Dama, one. Did you dock it again, Dama? No, I just caps locked it. Yeah, I did as well. I think we were both caps locked at the same time. But yeah, this is like with all boilers firing now. So it's going to be accelerating at the start of a fight basically at this point. And it's actually going okay, it's just it's sunk because it's not stable. <laughs> but it's going to pick up speed. That's yeah. a lot of propellers. And it's also a submarine at this moment. Yeah, that's because it's not, it's not built to it's not built to stabilize itself yet, but it's it's starting to push itself back up. So it's supposed to be When it gets up to full speed, it'll no, it goes up to like what 19 meters a sec. Dude, well, we tested, fast. yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that was um, other people. It's at 18 well. right now. It's kind of hovering around 17, 18, but I think that's because most of the mass of the ship is in the water. It'd probably go faster if we uh, yeah, get if a we little bit. Because, yeah. Um, I'll just cap, I'll cap stock it out again. Do we just want to do a it. quick PID stabilization just to see what happens? We, we, we need to install the props and things for it as well. So, so that, that, that's more of a build, I think. Um, I think we're in the wide down stage right now, aren't we? Since we're mucking around a bit. Yeah, I probably need to start getting ready to go in about 10 minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah, so the stream's not going to go on much longer. Probably not, so, but yeah, I um, think we're at a good stopping point. I mean, the hull, at least the. I think the shape of it is. Uh, Dama, Chaos. I'm afraid Chaos or Godzilla has um, understood your intent perfectly. You've got an appointment with the Furry Bulge. Mm. Furry Bulge? Yeah. Okay, either he needs to be executed or Dharma. Preferably <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, existence immediate response to that was furry alarm. And No, I'll tell you what the get, get, appointment get, get, get was if you really want to know, I don't care. I think I think Hertzmeister is ready to drag out the flame though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have nothing wrong with nothing against furries though, so Yeah, that's fine. That sounds like <laughs> something a furry would say. Uh, nope. Uh, just, I'm, I'm uh, not sure what kind of group I belong to, so I just go, eh. If I'm okay with it, I'm okay with it. If I'm not, I'm not. It's, I don't I don't tend to draw divisions between certain groups for myself. We're hitting I've, about I've 23 right now. That's actually not bad. It but will go faster than this. Um, I guess we just had a bit too much oomph in it earlier. Well, two things. It will go f faster than this more effectively because right now it's sitting low in the water because it's right. not stabilized properly. However, counterpoint, it's also operating at roughly um, uh, about 40% more power than it'll, it'll be sustaining as well. So I, I still think low 20s probably is what this thing is going to wind up with at 
as the build is currently going. So that's fine, yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure what the final length is though because um, it's still telling me it's 193 and I'm pretty sure yeah, I dropped about maybe 12 yeah, meters off of it. Yeah. Okay. The price the, is the, the, um, the, sh the ship has ki a kind of a box around it that gets increased if you build but never decrease until you pull it out of play and pull it back into play. Which is there. something that we cannot possibly do in multiplayer. Yippee skippy. All we could do is save it, delete it, and then build it up again, or reset the server, which we actually haven't done this entire time. So that's, it's that's been surprisingly stable, stable, considering. Yeah. yeah, it's held up. But this time um, we have like three people. How about for most? The, yeah, for most of it. Okay. I've I've shut off the uh, second day boilers, by the way. So speed's going to drop slightly. We. You were going to say something? Uh, it, it's no big deal. I was going to say though, um, we could just uh, restart the server real quickly though if uh, we wanted to get the stats off of it, or the, at the more up-to-date ones I guess for lack of a better term. Um, well, uh, we, we know that it's roughly 180 meters. So... It's still freaking big. It is. In actuality, I was wanting to go with something a little smaller than me. He's like, no, we gotta have 8 meter, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. Well, I, I tried to restrict how long I was making the uh, the rear section, expecting that Matey would take up like the two thirds of the rest of the allocation. Mm hmm. Wait, Not two I? times the allocation? <laughs> no, even then. Um, it's like um, the ship, the central armor section was like 55 ish meters. I took like um, 25 to 30 meters on top of that for my rear section. And then the other 100 meters are the row? Yeah, just Matey's bow section. Matey... My, my first response upon seeing the bow was, Matey, what the hell have you done? So, yeah, I that, think that, that tells you. If Ion says that, it's gotta be some serious shit, man. Yeah, it's like complete, it was completely unexpected because um, I think Matey built the bow without paying any kind of attention to the length. I mean, he even extended the armor section out compared to mm. how it was. That's why there was that big gap that you deleted. Yeah. I, oh, I'm, uh, I'm fully aware of this. So I think I grabbed the uh, thing. Is it coming back? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, I guess it, yeah, it's going at a speed of 30. A boat, not a plane. Yeah, FTD, this is a boat, not a plane. So there we go. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Do you even how thick the air is? Do what? Given how thick the air is in, in, in Nita, I'm not sure if it's water or not. Um, it's probably custard. <laughs> it's true as hell it ain't earth, uh, earth air. <laughs> and yeah, it's nice. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, Russ says you're good for speed, we just look at turning. Um, with um, was, were you talking about real life or in FTD actually with that? Real life, real life. Yeah, real life. Yeah, in real life, there's um something. They would stabilize so much in the forward direction that any attempt to change it, they would have to slow down a lot and even then have a large turning radius. And then uh, and then the force might actually pose a risk of um, snapping the ship in half if it turns too hard. Yeah, basically. That, that would be an think? interesting sight. Trying to well, turn that's what the ship that's just what, that's fucking what snaps. To the torpedoes, Gio. Yeah, that's the main. That's the main damage of a torpedo: the fact that um, it creates a, a pressure difference by. And water is not compressible, ship. or it, it resists yeah, compression anyway. Yeah, but um, then it's like the ship is like trying to fall down into this sudden hollow underneath it, and then the force of that is what snaps the ship in half. So that's why, usually, when a torpedo kills a ship, it snaps it in half. More, more than torpedoes, yeah. 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 Well, even back in um, early World Wars, torpedoes were having yep. that effect. Yeah, Depending on where they also... detonated, it would have to yeah. detonate underneath like the keel of the ship to be able to do that, I would imagine. Yes, no, um, do. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess the side of the ship could do it as well. It's just... Yeah, but Depending like, on the thickness of the ship really and the thickness of the material. Buckle the armor inwards and tear it. That, that's why part of the purpose of a bulge is actually to keep the torpedo detonation further away from the ship. 
Mm -hmm. So can probably withstand the force change. So you guys heard yeah. it from Ion. Uh, it's all about the hot bulge. Yep, mm. the bulge is all that matters. For you or for her? Uh, right. <laughs> um, sorry, I was trying to catch. I'm trying to catch for things like. Um, yeah, sure. That was. That was. Oh, that was. This, this is something. That, that, that was something you might be interested. In. Oh. Jawas. Um, sorry, Jawas. Yeah, there's Jawas. As well, watch out, everyone. They're going to steal your droids. Um, Jawsa said, "How about a one huge propeller race?" One huge Ooh. propeller race? Yeah. The rule according to the design is uh, design a ship with no propulsion other than one huge prop. Fastest to complete an obstacle course wins. Mm. <laughs> I, I thought that would interest you because you've done like some race uh, competitions before. So. Uh, I've just done drag queens. That's about it. Yeah, but it's still more than I've done. <laughs> that is true. Uh, though, by the way, that, drag queens is probably uh, th at the uh, next drag queens is probably going to be sometime around June, so... Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Drag Queens is um, a straight-line drag race with um, vehicles built to a certain maximum um, volume. Sorry, not maximum volume, maximum size, like, um, length with height. Mm-hmm. And they just go down um, a guidance track and whoever gets there first. It's like a, an FTD version of a slot car race. Except there's no bends in the course or anything like that, it's just like straight lines. Yeah. Also known as a drag race. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just because you say drag race doesn't mean that everyone's guaranteed to know what the drag race specifically is. Yeah, point. in other countries they don't drag race, at least not the exactly. way we do here. So, so in it, it, very it, few places do anyone ever drag race. But, or they might know. call it something else. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway, that's why I'm trying to explain stuff like that usually. Um, how's my say is using cram recoils the propulsion? Actually, yeah. ideas like that have been proposed. Um, yeah, that was the talk that was talked about when you first did did your first drag queens. Yeah, I I think so as long as it didn't destroy the track, and the uh, the car would be propelled forward down the track and not leave the ground, then I would probably be okay with this. Let me put it this way, I noticed several meters per second difference when my ship is shooting backwards. Mm. So, yep, that's it like definitely it. works. Mm. But, I think I'd be completely fine with a recoil powered car. Hmm, putting some serious cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are planning that entire flipping cheese contest thing after that. Yes. Would a, would a, would a warp drive count as propulsion? Uh, no. Technically? Yeah, it, well, it, that, it's, it's something. It is something. It's something. force on the craft, not just move it, so... But, no, that 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 would kind of go against the spirit of things, I think, Rizzle. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but I, I'm I, glad I, you were able to uh, help uh, us uh, specify that. Oh, the alarm's I going off. I didn't actually mean for going forward. I actually mean for going forward. Yeah, I actually meant for, for the turns. Dragging on Raz, uh, Raz, I'm sorry, but... Um, <laughs> Dammer does need to kind of get moving now. His alarm has just gone off. He just yep. So, Don't get me wrong, though. It's a lot of fun, guys. Mm, I've mostly... I've, yeah, that pretty much catches up on my comment section as well. So, um, yeah, we managed to get through that. Dammer, if you would like to save the vehicle under construction, I'm afraid we'll have to come back to it later. Um, yep. The Atero Dominatus cruiser. There's still a lot left. I don't think it's a cruiser okay. anymore, though. Fun to be honest. Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah. it probably goes more along the lines of probably. Uh... It's a frigate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's obviously a Corvette. Yeah. Yes. No, it, it it's a dinghy. <laughs> the lifeboat? <laughs> no, no, it, it it's like those little uh, inflatable things that you put around your arms. <laughs> I don't know if Very you quickly, can... Quickly, one last thing. Um, Jowza suggests that um, you could do a race party like, um, or speed run a story mission. Huh. For like um, a, a measure of like how quickly you complete something. But yeah, um, let's actually wrap the streams up here before we get distracted laughing about stuff because yeah. um, I don't want to get make them delayed any further. I appreciate it. Yeah, so... Um, 
Well, guys, this has been iMark 3 with Dama and Matey was out around a while ago. We've been working on a cruiser for Dama's ongoing Let's Play of uh, that the Depths. ballooned completely into something else entirely, but that's okay. It's either a battle cruiser or a pocket battleship. I think pocket battleship fits so far, but yeah. Thanks for watching. Pocket battle cruiser. <laughs> I think that's uh, probably the most accurate, the uh, pocket battle cruiser. Eh, well, in, in the end, it's whatever you want to call it, but yeah. Yeah. And that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I know you keep trying to wrap it up, and I keep interrupting, so yeah. I... Just, just do your outro, down it. This has been Damadoc82 with IMR3, Razul, and uh, Existence, and a bunch of other folks. Sorry if I forget your names. Uh, hope you all have yourselves a hell of a day. Keep your hammer high. Later. Later, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.